The opinions expressed by tonight's guest do not represent the opinions or position of Spaced Out Radio, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with SOR Media. Listener discretion is advised. Oh man, there's got to be something to listen to on this dial. This message is being broadcast by the Department of Defense of the Republic. At 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, multiple unidentified objects were confirmed to have entered Earth's atmosphere. It is speculated that these objects are of extraterrestrial origin. The broadcast will quiet at this time for your safety. Welcome to Space Down Saturday as we light the void with Joe Root on Space Down Radio. You can follow Joe on Twitter at Lighting the Void, on Facebook at Lighting the Void, and you can call into tonight's show at 501 777 5631. You can also follow Joe at spacedoutradio.com. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Why don't you talk into the microphone? I got a backup mic right here. Check, one, two. Testing, testing. Yeah, they both working, and guess what? They don't like no feedback. What's up? Now, let's fire the show up and light the void. On Spaced Out Saturdays, with your host, Joe Root. It's finally Saturday. Tonight, we're going to talk about our favorite subject. Good evening, welcome to Spaced Out Saturday tonight. I'm your humble host, Joe Roop. It's good to have you with us. It's good to be here. Very honored to be here. The moon is beautiful tonight. On in the past few nights, Venus has been lit up right beside it, if you guys haven't noticed that. So that's a good sign. Tonight is going to be a very cool conversation. Greg Doyle is with us, and we're finally going to get to go down this rabbit hole of the out-of-body experience and astral travel. It is the 19th right now, but actually where Greg is, it's the 20th. But thank you all for joining us, wherever you're listening from, across the World Wide Web or on our affiliate stations. Let's welcome in those affiliates, WQEE 99, Rock the Key, down in noon in Georgia, home of the Walking Dead. The United Public Radio Network 107.7 in New Orleans and just about every country around the world. We are also live on spacedoutradio.com, Spreaker, and KTLK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM. The music you heard was from Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, formerly of Guns N' Roses, currently of Art of Anarchy. Bumblefoot is the official sound of Spaced Out Radio. You can check out SOR on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. The Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can follow me on Twitter at Lighting the Void as well. The new YouTube channel is Spaced Out Radio. We're also on iHeartRadio and TuneIn. You can download the shows from iTunes. And, of course, on the web, we're at spacedoutradio.com. And if you go to patreon.com for as low as a dollar a month, you can become a patron of Spaced Out Radio. And there's all kinds of ways you can take part in the show. You can sign into one of the chat rooms on Spreaker, on UPRN chat room, on Facebook at the SOR Space Travelers Club. If you're on Twitter, it's hashtag Spaced Out Radio. And uh, I'll get to your questions in there if I get a chance. Lots of chat rooms. The Fringe FM's got a new chat room as well. If you go onto the listen thing, there's a chat in there. There's also a relay in the Fringe FM, so I can see some of you guys in there. You're, I'll get to your questions in there, too. And uh, if we open the phones up, that number is 501-777-5631. Now, um, 
I do want to mention Tim Doyle's UFO Seekers, some of the best UFO footage on the web. You can check that out at spacedoutradio.com. Also, Leslie Mitchell Clark's Contact TV and The Encounter. And there is a store there where you can pick up a T-shirt or a sticker. So I don't really know that we've done a show uh, about like 100% astral travel, but we seem to bring it up a lot in the show because I've had some experiences with it. And so have you. Now, you guys know that I had Grimerica on here, which is uh, one of my favorite pre-recorded podcasts to listen to. And they had an episode on there with Greg Doyle, and it was amazing. It was one of the best podcast episodes I ever heard, and I was like, I've got to get this guy on either Spaced Out Radio or Lighting the Void. Does not matter. Got to get him on. And he's here with us. And Greg is the author of Awakening the Giant Within, a personal adventure into the astral realms, which details his experiences in the astral world. He holds astral travel workshops, meditation classes, and offers healing sessions sessions as a Reiki master in Brisbane. As a, as a former professional classical musician, Greg first discovered meditation primarily to combat stage fright, but in 99, he awakened to the reality of the phenomenon of astral projection. This was a life-changing experience that expanded his consciousness, changed the course of his career, and altered the very perception of his being at a fundamental level. Now, Greg's healing and meditation work specifically aimed at activating the latent potential. Now, this, uh, that may... The, the many benefits include greater concentration, ease of performance, more restorative sleep, and increased general health, well-being, and vitality. Greg works with individuals and groups in both private and corporate settings. And you can check out his website at gregdoyleastral.com. All the links are there in the show note. Greg, thank you for joining us all the way from Australia. I know it's bright and sunny over there, right? It is bright and sunny. Joe, thank you for inviting me. It's great to be on the show. Yeah, like I said, when I heard you on the Grab America show, you know, you, you hear a lot of people talk about the the uh, out of body experiences and astral travel, and some of it you can believe, some of it you can't. But if you're like me and you've kind of had your own personal experiences, you know when somebody's being legit, and you the way you talk about it is amazing because you really go into some of the stuff most people don't talk about, even the the semantics, the little things. And it's really a cool adventure. You know, I don't honestly don't have your book yet, but I'm going to get it. I can't wait to get into it. Yeah, what you're saying is true, Joe. I think a lot of um, people, there's kind of secrecy around this whole astral experience. So when, when I first um, started to talk about it a little bit, people would say, oh, you know, you, you don't talk about that stuff, that stuff you keep to yourself. And I, I thought to myself, uh, why? <laughs> people need to know this. And, um, and I think um, because my background, like, I'd literally never heard of astral travel uh, before I kind of worked out that's what I was doing. Um, so it kind of, I kind of started from from kind of ground zero with my experiences. I just had no idea. And, and as a result, I never really preempted anything, nor did I go through that fear phase of the experience that many people talk about. I, I just it was kind of like a free pass on many, on many levels. It was just straight in there. And it really was... You know, as you've heard um, from Gramerica, it really was quite quite an amazing journey, the whole thing, you know. Can you tell me about the first time it happened to you? Like, what state of mind were you in? What state of being were you in when all this started happening? That, that's a good question. I often think back to that when I, because, you know, as you said, I, I, I do help people to, to actually, you know, take this experience on and actually experience it for themselves. When I look back, Really, nothing particularly exceptional. I, um, as as you mentioned, I'd I'd done meditation for years um, since my twenties, and um, for for stage fright, just because I thought as a musician, you know, it's good good to to be calmer. But I think looking back, um, I'd always had issues falling asleep. I, I remember as a as a kid asking friends at school, "How do you fall asleep?" I don't really get the whole falling asleep thing. So I was obviously primed on a certain level. I think um, the meditation I'd done was just purely for physical and mental relaxation. It was just to feel um, centered. And I remember thinking that was a gem when I discovered just basic, you know, transcendental meditation, just to be centered. And then not long, look, if I look at really the primer, I think not long, perhaps, um, you know, a, a couple of weeks before it started happening, I did have 
a craniosacral treatment. I was living in Austria at the time and I had a sore shoulder. And I went along there and said, look, this was probably actually about a month before. And um, I just thought, you know, I can't, I can't lose this, this, this shoulder pain. And this woman was obviously an energy healer of a kind because weird stuff happened. You know, I just had um, strong reactions to what she was doing. I said, what's going on? She said, well, you've got blocks, you know, so your, your pain in your shoulder was a block. And that, that fascinated me. That I kind of thought personally, I thought, well, I was, I was pretty nuts and bolts on a certain level. I thought, well, don't just tell me it's, uh, you know, an energy block and then leave it at that. Well, what do you mean by that? And then she said, well, we've all got energy blocks and this kind of stuff. And so I went back for a few sessions and I think they kind of primed me for it. Then, um, you know, not too long after a few treatments um, of, you know, sort of that body work kind of thing, then the very first experience was just a normal night, went to bed. I Look, it is a great question because I remember thinking to myself, around that time kind of is that all there is on a certain level i just remember living i was living my life i wasn't looking for anything um so bizarre as this whole astral consciousness but i remember thinking really looking back i remember thinking it all seems a little um too straightforward so you weren't uh, trying to come you weren't trying to do this no, it just happened not at all no, i never heard of it <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Nor would I have tried to do it. And I, the funny thing is when I have our workshops, I look at people, not so much now, but I, I look at people and go, why are you here? What, what, why, what brings you to an astral travel workshop? I never would have gone to one of those. I never heard of it. And it's fascinating, as you say, like yourself, Joe, how people have had all, these, all of these experiences um, themselves. And, and if I get into that initial experience, because I think it is a good one to relate. And so generally, the, the experience happens just before dawn. Okay, so I'm lying in my apartment. It's a mezzanine apartment, which is a very low kind of, you know, part of kind of low down in, in an apartment complex in the middle of Vienna, which is kind of a built up small, small kind of city. And I remember this all of a sudden, um, a light seems to wake me. And I remember thinking, has it, it can't be the sun coming through the window because I live in the mezzanine apartment. So I was very lucid. Like I thought, no, the only way of seeing the sun is to go up to the window and sort of you know, scrape your head against the window and look up. So I was very, very, even now as I think of it, it is somehow etched in a memory that is that is far more engraved within me than any of these mortal memories. So, so, so this light seems to come um, into my forehead is the feeling, and it seems to um, collect all of these triangles of kind of um, electrostatic, light if you like behind my closed eyelids because if you if you, if any if your listeners now close their eyelids you'll often see a little bit of kind of white electrostatic stuff anyway it seemed to gather yeah. all of this energy and, and it sort of pulled it into a circle um and it felt like um kind of like a ball and this and this and this ball was just like so bright it had totally woken me up to the point that i knew exactly that i was in bed where i was i knew you know it was like uh I was totally in a, in a mind awake state, not freaking out at all because at the same time it seemed to um, infuse some energy into my heart which made me feel very good. That, that's the best way I can put it. I just felt really relaxed and kind of uber, uber good. Um, you, you would say blissful. It was that first um, kind of taste of that what, what was to come and many of these experiences do are accompanied with that, that blissful state. And so – as I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, holy shit, what, what's, this is sensational. I'm thinking don't open my eyes, so yeah. I'm, I'm that loose. Um, and then there's a wind that starts up, and often you get the astral wind, so it's in, you feel it in your ears. So as I'm lying there, I'm feeling in the direction of my where my physical ears would be, a lot of wind seem to, seem to be moving toward this, this ball of light. Then I feel, and the ball of light's very bright, and I feel... It asked me, not in, not verbally, but there's a, there's a feeling of invitation. Do I want to come with with? And I just thought, uh, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> and I, I just there was no hesitation. And um, so I'm I'm into this ball, and then then it it I go down like a tunnel, and this tunnel is twisting. It the tunnel it has sections. It's twisting left, right, all over the place. I'm moving very quickly. This first experience, I had no body when I moved down. This was like um, some form of awakening, I guess you would call it, into this. So not just within a week, 
I'm I'm walking past the local video store, and I and I'm I'm moved to 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 borrow. I see the the film Contact with Jodie Foster, and um, I watch that movie, and I had not beforehand really been that interested in um, the science fiction thing, and um, I was really when she had her um, experience going down the wormhole, and a Contact. I, w- I remember being moved to tears, and it was so similar. So I'm going down this. What I would what I would then call a week later a wormhole. That's that's what it was, um, and then eventually I remember thinking, oh, when does this end? And then I and then I'm all of a sudden I'm out, and I'm um, hovering in the atmosphere. It seems of a very um, how do I put this? It's like a, a very dry kind of arid. Uh, planet and it's the feeling of not earth it's just that's the feeling and it's it's very very real and one thing that distinguishes and really confused me at the beginning was that astral experiences are much more real than the 3d reality that's yeah. how you know you have when that's i heard you, you say know. that the first time i knew it i knew it i knew yeah. it happened to you because i you know there's some times that i've questioned that it's actually happened to me greg but there was one time that i know it did you know yeah. and it was yeah. extremely real uh, I, I felt lighter. I felt great. You know, I did. And everything was just very vivid. And you're right. There was this kind of buzzing or type wind feel around. It was very different. Like my ears were different. Yeah, there is. A, and, and, you know, what I've discovered um, since that is that the ears have a lot to do with it. There's like um, the sound or listening, the 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 um, sense of listening is probably the the. Um, closest sense to astral awareness or the one that is activated the most um, or the one that you can use the most to access realms and we'll, we'll get into that so so and that 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 very real that kind of you know um yeah is is a signature of the astral experience so on that particular occasion i'm, I'm hovering in this atmosphere probably i don't know uh, seem to be quite high maybe 100 feet or so above the surface and um there are these tall buildings in front of me a series of very they're, they're, there's no vegetation but they're kind of very uh, very tall towers and then they open up and they're kind of disc shape at the top so but they are actual structures um and i'm seeing many many rows of lights like you know hund- hundreds of windows um, in each of these uh, buildings and um some have the lights on, some off, and it's like a feeling of dusk. And I'm thinking, oh wow, this is. And and once again, what 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 started then? It started then that notion of taking in kind of information, like a download. Um, later on, I'd feel it like like little coins dropping at the back of my head or behind my ears. It's really weird. You know, very very. Hmm. Uh, it's like something dropping. I actually think that's to do with DMT. I actually think it's actually dripping. Like your pineal gland, gland was dripping something yes. out. Okay. That's what I. That's that's what I'm. I've come to feel and. Um, it was the feeling of there are others, and and it wasn't a question I had previously entertained, um, but that was the opening. And then I remember, so it was a real feeling of being on a planet that was not Earth. And then I remember coming to and having these tears of ecstasy and just thinking, okay, something huge just happened. And then um, the very, I got to tell you though, the very next night it was funny. Very next night, I go to bed, lie down, close my eyes, and it's there again, the the white light and the wind. Open my eyes, gone. Close my eyes, it's there. Open my eyes, gone. And I think, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared because I, I, there wasn't the, like sleep actually prepares us. That's why it generally happens before dawn because we've gone through those cycles of sleep that generally kind of filter away that lo- the logical realms of fear. Like the logical mortal realms are infused with fear. The illogical realms, the ones we move into, um, into the astral, kind of have less of that if we don't carry it with us so yeah. i've gone straight from a from a mortal uh, quasi fearful state what i would call a mortal quasi fearful state straight to closing my eyes um and there was nothing in feeling in my heart that was and i just thought well i'm, I'm too scared to fall asleep which i was that next night i was too scared to fall asleep <laughs> I don't blame you. I, i've had the same experience <laughs> with you know like shadow being type things but i keep the more i read and the more i listen to people like you talk about this and and coaches, they all talk about that. There's this level of fear that you've got to kind of get past. It's always there. And, you know, as you're talking about this white light, I interviewed a man a long time ago who used to do Eastern practices 
And he would tell me that, you know, the third eye was a big thing and that he had to have pretty much like a guru teach him how to meditate and see this light behind his eyes. So it makes me wonder, you know, if your meditation practices didn't just give you a leg up when all this happened, you know. I think absolutely, Joe. I think I think it did. Um, from what I've seen since then, I think there's like a little time capsule, you know, built into your pineal gland, I think that, and I think that um, because a lot of the experiences I had early on really, um, really brought it home to me, like a lot of them were very personal, a lot of them I was, and I wasn't into the notion of past lives, but being shown, you know, like past lives, um, hearing my own voice in the astral from somewhere else say, I want to see me, and then seeing myself, and then, you know, the wind in the ears, slideshows, you're getting younger, and then there's all these you know, like Chinese, Mongolian, African medicine man and seeing an ET. And so it sort of, I started to realize um, that I was more than this lifetime. So it was kind of a feeling to me that it kind of let things off the hook. It's a funny way to put it, but I felt, I could, I kind of felt, ah, I see. And it was like um, an internal knowing that a lot of the dramas that I had mistaken for my own personality and issues weren't just the result of this lifetime it's tricky to put into words but it was a feeling of like ah, oh, like a letting go like a letting go of that holding pattern that i think um the average human kind of entertains it was sort of coming to the realization that i'd actually you know been a non-human and all this a lot of things just fell into place and then um i think it the meditation obviously my attraction because i remember when I, when i got into meditation when i was studying music i was a, a little bit, bit obsessed like i like every time I could, if I was, you know, in a shoe shop, I'd, I'd sit there and just think, oh, why she's getting the shoes? I'll just relax my body. I was, and I'd be in the train reading a book and think, why am I holding my body all the time? Like I'd feel into my body and think, why when I read a book am I holding something? And um, I did become obsessed in the in the in the kind of best sense of just feeling that constantly, even now as I speak to you, I'm conscious that my mind is actually all through my body. So this, I guess, the linking of the body and mind. Uh, we're, we're taught that the mind is um, some abstract thing that's kind of hovering or in the brain, I think. Yeah. But, um, yeah, when I realized that – and so I, I, you're right. It, it did um, – it was kind of the the keystone, I think, having a meditation practice that wasn't – I never saw it as a chore. It was always something that I could just feel like a go, turn inward, and it felt very intimate. It was like very, very basic, simple meditation. But I just felt um, to, to feel kind of intimate with oneself – was 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 a good thing to to nurture you know yeah for sure and uh, you know i haven't been able to have an experience in a long time and i think it's just because i'm really tired but when i hear your stories because you have a story kind of like robert monroe's kind of like jason quits like other people where you know you did you did move into this physical realm but you also which i'm i'm really fascinated with to be able to move in this realm where we're at now but I'm also just as fascinated to see that people can move on into other realms. And then I like to kind of analyze the judgment because everyone just assumes that, you know, these higher realms are better or something, but sometimes I don't know, you see. So I really dig into this subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. Look, you know, um, as you alluded to earlier with the fear thing, I mean, I, I, um, <sighs> It was a whole new world for me to 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 have these beings um, talk to me, um, to be taken places. Often by beings of by often often vibrations would take me before dawn. So in the beginning it was light. Sometimes it's still lights, but generally um, vibrations would wake me up, and I'd be thinking, "What? Why am I awake in a sleeping body again?" And then I'd feel the body move out. So often the astral experience you move out, and. Look, often I'd, I'd just astrally awake and there'd be a monster at the end of my bed and I'd go, shoo, or, you know, I'd swear at it or, you know, I'd say in the name of Jesus. I mean, just sort of, That's come what up I did, man. Stuff. But I didn't you say did, shoo. I freaked out and I definitely used the name of Jesus. It was just an instinct from my childhood. It's an instinct. You know? It's fascinating, isn't it? But, you know, like what I realized is like I, I've had people come <laughs> through. you love you love it when you, read, when you read the book. But there's an issue. There's a guy who actually came through into my physical room. Like oh. I tr kept on trying to get out of this guy away from him in the astral. Then he came into my room with a whole group of people and and sort of said something really odd. And what 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 I realized is, you know, for me, I went through a point of um, 
feeling this is what's going on here you know to 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 it felt so beautiful to go out of body so even though i was um learning things about myself like there were these so-called guides in the beginning and i was not um into the whole new age thing and even that expression guides i didn't sort of Reading until later when people say, well, it's a very new age concept. And I was going, well, there's just this guy and this woman who tell me they're my guides and they're showing me stuff about auras and all this stuff early on. So it was very, the, the situations um, I was taken into early on were very um, kind of, um, h- how do I say, were very kind of in- intelligent, not intelligent, they, they, they made sense. There was something going on. There was uh, they kind of clicked in everything. It wasn't just sort of a random going here and there were lots of randoms, but early on these particular ones, it was like they were trying to prove to me that this is real. And so I had a real battle. I remember I'd come home, still working musician. I come home and I just, I just want to meditate. I just want to go out talking. You know, I just want to, I yeah. want out of here. I remember my girlfriend at the, t- the time saying, um, who, 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 who did stay with me through all this, who always supported me. But she said, look, Greg, you're not, you're not very present these days. You, you tend not to, to associate with physical. So I went through that stage and then I, and then I, um, I remember being blocked out. I, I once went astral and I was actually going just straight up, you know, let's get out of here. Let's go into the higher realms. Cause you can actually angle your astral body to go into higher realms, you know? And I was going flying, let's go. And then there was this giant hand around my shoulders. And I kid you not, there was a thumb around my left shoulder, these hands around my fingers around my uh, chest. Uh, and I'm going, what a hand? What? Was this the hand of God? Like as a joke, I was thinking, pushes me back down, back down to earth, back down in my body. And I just feel like I'm sort of, you know, waking up in mud and clay. I'm just so pissed off. And um, I thought, what's this all about? I remember for that, the next month, I couldn't get out of my body. And I remember um, being really, because I was really obsessing. I was just getting out of body all the time and just thought, you know, and then I, at, at the time, I remember, because um, I had this uh, this place in the snow in Austria. It was beautiful. And I remember I could go cross country skiing out there. And it was, I needed to be kind of away from uh, urban areas. And, um, like, I remember the snow stopping. I remember once skiing along, and all of a sudden the snow stopped. I thought, hang on, what? And I was looking through the snow, and everything had stopped. And a few times time stopped, and I thought, hang on. So this other realm is actually interweaving. It was like it was, sh- it was showing itself to be interweaving through the physical realm. And I learned that to be more and more. And then I kind of, this wonder kind of um, woke up within me. I thought, oh, well, this reality is you know, uh, not so dusty after all. And then they started up again. So it's a little bit like, um, as you said before, certain levels, like it would show me certain things, uh, sometimes guiding me gently, like from the hand and sometimes the, 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 the underside of a shovel, uh, coming straight onto your, your face at, at high velocity. It was like, it would either be a shock or a gentle thing, but I, I really learned, uh, and this took some time, um, and many adventures, I learned to let go. Uh, it, I know that sounds uh, a, a bit uh, kind of glib, but I really did learn that if I were, I remember the last time I conducted, because I was a conductor and, and uh, violinist, and um, last time I conducted uh, was back in Australia, and I, um, as I was conducting this concert, I felt these hands grab me, these invisible hands trying to push my arms around. And I, th- and I just started to sweat. I thought, no, just get through this thing. Just get through it. Then oh. I'll stop. Yeah, I'd be tripping was, on that. <laughs> so full on. And I just thought, okay, that's it. My life is not the way I thought it was going to be. It seems to be going in this direction. And things just, you know, just got so weird. Um, you know, ET visitations. And I remember my, my wife um, at that stage, we, we'd married and she was saying, look, Greg, I know you, you're bringing these energies into the house. Could you please not do this? This is just freaking me out. So it kind of got really shaky. And um, in the best sense, though, I think, you know, it's funny. I, if, if, we, if we go right to the deep end now and how I feel now, I feel really good. Like I feel... Um, um, when you when you when you kind of uh, reverse um, engineer the experience, and, and and I think a lot of the meditations I do with people are kind of reverse engineering because I've actually realised we all go out and I've witnessed that at night we all go out of body. But uh, when I looked at when I when I would come back into the mortal state, just the, the these like um, armour of fear being clapped around you, you know, like the fear of annihilation, fear of death, fear, fear of uh, loss, fear of like wow, just slap 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 as you come down. So uh, when you get out a lot. Um, it's quite contrary to what people believe. You actually become more grounded in this reality. The thing is, your perception of this reality alters. 
So my perception of this reality is is that of a magical reality. It's very much rooted in um, in nature and and things like this, and also people, um, not at all in the illusion. So I've sort of gone through that. I was even taught or shown in the astral about because I was quite naive a kind of chap, but I was shown kind of these conspiracy uh, things and um, kind of collusions that were going on between ET and humans to to keep us suppressed. And I was kind of dismayed by what I was shown. And then told not to obsess, and of course I obsessed. Went through the obsession, which everyone has to. Uh, part of um, part of um, enlightenment or awakening is is that you see what's there. You see what is there. So so everyone's journey as you awaken is to get really angry and get really pissed off with the system. And then you get to a point. Yeah. Well, I feel anyway, personally, I feel anyway that 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 system or the what they term the illusion is is literally streaming out the opposite of what is so rather than angering me now i think oh okay that's the opposite of that rather like looking looking in a mirror you know you think you're looking at yourself but you're looking at yourself from left to right rather than rather than how you look so even though it looks as though you know um it's so it's it's really cut and dried on a certain level so i find that um you can actually connect to a 3d that is just beautiful, um, and it, it it comes at a cost. Um, one one interesting cost was, and once again, I'm sort of jumping in the deep end here. But but a few years ago, I was meditating, and then there was a tweak in the back of my brain uh, head. It was sort of a left back, and I went out to 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 my wife and said, um, "Look, something something really strange has happened." And she said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Look, I don't know the names of the people in my family. I don't know the names of any of my friends. I I, I can't put a sentence together." Oh no. And it was really interesting. Now, I've since had a concussion, had an MRI. There were no lesions. It wasn't a stroke. Now, this was interesting. I was still doing a bit of music work, and I go along, and I was kind of a very funny guy, the you know, the sort of um, trickster. And I and I'd um, I hadn't spoken to people about my astral experiences so much. I, I had gone into energy healing from astral, but I hadn't actually outed myself, if you like, publicly. Anyway, I I would rehearse conversations, and this is kind of kind of relevant and. I found that um, I couldn't actually have a conversation. By the time I'd gotten to think of the word, it, the conversation had moved on. So it was a lonely time for me, and um, and and it puzzled a few people. But I remember one uh, woman who who kind of caught on to it and said, "Greg, I think she knew a bit about me." She said, "I think because you have these astral experiences, this is kind of um, kind of uh, you know because of that." And when I think about it, like it was affecting your brain. You know, like, is that what they were trying to yeah, say? Like, hey, this is absolutely. really wonking your brain out. Well, I tell you, my narrator stopped. So from that point on, to get in a meditative state, very easy. Simply nothing going on. Nothing in the background. Hmm. Which, now that I've built it back, and the funny, the funny thing was, I actually wrote my book on astral travel as a therapy to get from one end of the sentence to the end. Because I knew... You have to finish the sentence. Wow. So I think of the, and and in the end, I thought, look, what what, what will I write about? I will write about us to travel. Now that that kind of sounds very obtuse, but that's the way it works in that world. Um, um, when you kind of let go to it, and you know, and allow um, your higher uh, aspects of yourself to to kind of live through you that's how it'll happen. So that was like a shovel to the back of the head. And so now I'm fine. You know, I find I, I'm um, a bit bit different the way I talk kind of thing, but I find my also my short-term memory is very bad. But what I realize is that's that's fine because, see, a lot of memory we hold, a lot of memory doesn't exist. You know, it existed, but it doesn't exist. And we, we, we um, I remember I used to meditate on a planet in the astral and a few other meditators have said they've been to the same place. It's like this sort of small planet or the... The, the um, horizon is very close. It's a rocky planet. There's a red moon on the right. There's another moon out in front. And, and I know two other astral travelers who've said they've been to the same place and meditated. And I remember when I first went there, I thought I just moved to me- meditate. And I remember on that planet, it was so profound, even though it wasn't the most freaky or bizarre experience I'd had. It, the profound feeling was being so far from the... Um, collective human consciousness, it was this real feeling that there was nothing to strive for, this real feeling that every aspect of myself that had thought it, it, it had failed somehow or gone down a dead end, it felt like it all came back to me, like there was nothing uh, lacking in me. Um, and it's hard to put into words, but it was a profound feeling of kind of perfection and that 
there's no add-ons that even the astral experience is not an add-on it's a it's a releasing of the programming so and i remember after that um and then then i had this experience with the back of my brain and i remember it, it's almost like the past let me go and as a result my short-term memory is appalling but i find i can function quite well still so it's okay like i've, I've come to terms with that um but as i said the narrator stopped and even though i had issues talking for a while um, I've met a couple of people who've been through the same thing now. Um, this can happen when you when you go through such um, on many levels a brutal awakening as I did. It was very kind of quick and and um, it was uh, very um, uh, like it was like I was teetering on the fence for a little while. Then then that then the, then the back of the head when I got that little tweak it was like now nah, fall over the fence, let go. Don't even try to uh, ice skate here. Just just go through the ice. And so when it, since I've done that and um, allow things to happen. I actually find I actually enjoy this reality more because I see it just as a game of energy and I'm not down, I'm not belittling it. Like one astral experience I had, um, once again, often I would, uh, so I go out of body and I just sort of hang in this kind of void. And then um, I, I heard my own voice say once again through like a resonator, he seems to know more than I do, or I call an aspect of my higher self. And, and he said, I want to see my own death. Mm. And then I was this, was, this was freaky. And then I was in this, I remember it was like a hotel room um, like a beige carpet, and I was looking at the window, and I thought, "What's going on here?" And I'm I'm trying to pull myself up on the bedspread behind me, and I, and I realize there's all this blood all over me, and I'm drowning in blood. And I'm thinking, "Okay, I know I've got astral. Um, I had the directive of I want to um, experience my own death, and so I just thought, let it happen. And I and I just I just my heart was going crazy in the astral, and I and I, I just drowned in my own blood. But then when I came to in the physical after it, I felt once again the sense of bliss. And my heart wasn't at all going crazy because a lot of people say, "Oh, if you do the astral experiences, you might have a heart attack." That that's rubbish. You, you, you wake saw up your own death. Did you really see it? Experienced it, yeah. In this oh body. man! I will avoid the room if I get there, just because that's my nature. I like to play around with things, but um, <laughs> I know what the room looks like. <laughs> you said <laughs> you earlier know. that you 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 heard a voice. See, I had a voice. I'm going to tell you this. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to repeat this, but I got Greg here, no, so no, I got to no. ask. Do, do. I love to. Up so, so when I was trying to do these out of body experiences, I was trying to do it every night and I would get to that, that vibrative state, you know, where everything's just kind of humming, you know, in my whole body. And I knew, okay, I'm about to come out and I would sit up and couldn't, and I got mad and kind of started headbutting to get out. And that's when I said, I command you to release me by life and light. But when I said that a voice came through me that sounded like James Earl Jones, it wasn't me, but it came through me. And I'll never forget that. But I also remember something shoving me back, like some type of black blob looking, you know, uh, Rorschach figure thing pushing me back in my body. But I was like, where did that voice come from? It was sure wasn't mine when I made it happen, though. No, absolutely. I mean, it's a voice coming through to you. I mean, um, and you hear that, you know, and it's sort of like feels like it's coming from almost above, but also within your head, you know, sort of, yeah. you know, it's coming from it's an external voice that seems to be through some kind of resonator, like a sort of a, I mean, right. it is kind of bizarre. I know it is bizarre. Thing. You know, I even had um, experiences where, uh, and when you when you astral travel, um, often when you're flying, it's not you're being flown. So, see, more and more, I was shown that it, it is a guided experience. So, um, I remember once I was flying, and uh, I thought, hang on, I looked around, and I and I, I saw this crystalline creature holding me by the ankles, flying me along. And I thought, hang on. And it was like a faceted um, humanoid being, it was transparent, um, but you could see it was like, like a, you know, a diamond cut uh, person. Um, and I just said, what, what the? And, and I remember he w went through this resonator and it was also like an electric resonator and it was kind of, um, he spoke in a, a language that was alien. But I remember, the, I remember the meaning of the word, he just said, you don't need to know this. And I remember thinking, well, first of all, that's bizarre. See, uh, a lot of my experiences, I even in the beginning it was very clear, like my guide saying, "Why are you so sad? What's going on here? Showing past lives, blah blah." All these things that show you, let's take you to the ships where all these astral bodies are going, and look at what they're doing to them, and they're being used, and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, uh, and while these messages were co co coherent, was the word I wanted to find earlier. They're very coherent a line line of, of messaging. I was more experienced. I was more interested in the actual phenomenon of astral travel like i was just thinking wow this is bizarre you can go out of your body and so 
if I trusted someone to relate an experience, they go, that's amazing, blah, blah, blah. And I go, yeah, yeah, that was amazing. But I'm just interested in the, the phenomenon of astral travel and why some people get out, why some people don't. Now, it's funny you said you were pushed back in. Um, I, in the beginning also, I heard that you could um, get out of body in this realm because I was sort of discovering that this was astral travel. I think I've got, someone gave me a book in um, – the, this meditation woman in, in Austria, she gave me a book called uh, Soul Travel. I remember thinking, okay, so I was getting close to what it was in the beginning. And and um, I thought, wow, I can get out in this reality. So I thought, okay, I'll just imagine myself going out. And so I remember I was in Munich at the time and I, and I did some exercises, you know, imagining myself out of my body and all this kind of stuff. And I thought nothing's happened. And then I got up in the night to go to the bathroom and then I turn around and I see my body in bed and I think, oh, I think, wow, I'm out of my body. This is fantastic. And then I'm seeing people walk through the room. You know, I oh, this. no, man. See, that's the stuff I can't handle. I can't no, no, handle I tell that. You, I, I, I was crap with ghosts early on, but actual people were fine. Now, this woman walked through and I, 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 she was naked. And I said, well, who are you? And she said, I'm from England. And kept walking. And what <laughs> I did was I actually, I actually walked through a few of the rooms in this hotel. It was interesting how the first time it happened was in a hotel. So I was able to walk through... And, and look at what was happening when people were sleeping. And I could see um, their astral bodies just kind of out of their physical, all people walking around like zombies. Next morning, I was able to verify that these people were, in fact, my neighbors, you know, the different in the different rooms. So it was the early experience was very much verification. I remember that very first one in this reality out like a ghost. I remember going, to, um, I want to go and visit my girlfriend and pull her out of body. That was what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I... Uh, I, I got out, I saw these people, then I'm into a void where it's very black and nothing, and that also has the, the connotation of somehow negative, but it's not. That's the programming from the mainstream, so it's the opposite of that. So I'm in this black void, and I hear the, the om for the first time. It's a very low, like a very, very, very low male um, voice going om, like an A-U-M. And, and I'm not a Buddhist, but I heard this om, and it was just like amazing i remember thinking whoa this is freaking the shit out of me but i'm going to hang around a bit because it felt good and then i'm i'm flying toward vienna where my girlfriend was and and then i'm stopped uh, over this building i think why, why 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 am i here and i'm looking in great detail at the top of a skyscraper um and once again the memory these memories it's funny because my memories is, is as i said not that good but the memory for my astral things is like it's somehow etched in a different memory bank that is more real. That's all I can say. And then, and then I'm, I'm a week later. Uh, uh, once again, verification. I look open a paper in Vienna and I see this Millennium Tower that has just opened, and and that this was exactly the photo from above because this tower was um, just newly built, and and it was like verification. For some reason, whoever had flown me, whatever was behind this, actually had um, shown me, stalked me over this tower, knowing that a week later I would see the exact picture for the first time in a newspaper. These kind of things happened all, and I wasn't even asking for verification, but subconsciously perhaps I was. Anyway, then I'm into the, the apartment and my, my girlfriend's there, and I'm going, hi, Moni, and, and she's going, hi, and I see her astral body. Uh, she observes me. Now, when I try to wake people up, this is what I'm, I'm getting to about this notion of who can go out, who can't. Um, she's hovering above her body, and when I say hello, she, her eyes open and it's kind of drunk and she recognizes me, then goes to sleep again. And then um, like, like someone with full-blown dementia, if you like, yeah. if you're on the phone, just sort of put the phone down. So, so she it was don't like remember some, it at all? No, no. And, and I was saying, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And she's going, okay. And I'm trying to yank her out and it's not quite coming out. Um, now, when, as I said in the beginning, uh, I was interested in the phenomenon. So I um, would often go to random people and try to yank them out i remember once um like often i'd stand in the street and let people walk through me and i would feel their emotional state it was amazing or i'd i'd i'd, I'd even scare them i'd fly down and go boo and see if i got a reaction because i was just interested in what's going on well you know i didn't know what I, I didn't ask for this that that's how it started and um i'm I, I wasn't seeing it as a spiritual thing per se in the beginning you know it was a pheno phenomenological thing so uh, and i remember once I, I flew down to this church and this guy came out of the church and I said, Jesus loves you in the astral. And he got the shock of his life. And so people in human <laughs> form. Yeah. And, but when I did this, I tell you, it's kind of funny that I was moved to say that. And I was just, you know, uh, playing kind of silly buggers in the astral. But, but then what started happening was I remember that Jesus loves you thing. 
uh, someone, a guy behind me standing, very well-dressed guy, he looked, good-looking kind of blonde guy, said, um, Greg, don't do that again. And I tried it a few times again. <laughs> and <laughs> yanking people out by their legs, and I was told, Greg, don't, don't do that. So what I found is um, many people now from workshops say, oh, Greg, oh, thanks for coming to take me out of my body last night. I don't remember doing that. But it seems on the astral I'm doing a lot of that at the moment. It seems to be what I'm doing. But um, how I feel people who, who, who really um, get very fearful on abduction and stuff, alien abduction, the word alien is a fraught word. It's a loaded word. I mean, look at the, look at the way. And the word alien, alien is it a loaded oh. word. Oh, isn't it? Look at the way the illusion feeds it. I mean, any other word, non-human, let's put it to say non-human. A lot of people are being taken out by non-humans. They actually define themselves through it, even though they, they, they think they're a victim. But really, any being that is taking us out um, has some kind of, um, th th there is kind of like a, um, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't say, what would you say, uh, like a, um, a system out there in place, it would seem, um, and etiquette, an etiquette, there's an astral etiquette. So I think that anyone who is being taken out by people or, you know, people, a loose expression of people, it's, it's not, if, if they, if they weren't supposed to do it, they wouldn't do it. And, and more and more, what I see is that there are many, um, ETs that have had a hand in our actual creation as beings. And um, people have issues with that, but that's what I've been shown. And so they, they know our systems very, very well. They know our systems very, very well. And, of course, you've got the shadow side. You've got these aspects of, of uh, other agendas, you know, with, with um, beings as well. And um, so like anything, you know, um, look at what's on the planet. So we obviously have come from energies that, you know, were warring and all that kind of stuff. And, and um, you know, but in the end, I, I've really got to say it's it's such a benevolent cosmos out there. And once you get through these levels of fear, once you realize the fears aren't you, I think at the beginning I get out and I, I freak out and I realize, hang on, that's not my fear. That's like a collective fear or it's a band of fear or it's a program. It's a frequency. Once once you get beyond that, um, you're not hassled. And and people who say, oh, that sounds scary, well, look at the, look at the taxation system. Look at, look at um, globalization. Yeah. Uh, these things. Far scarier, you know. If I if I bump my head, uh, you know, uh, against a rock, that's scarier. I mean, come on. I mean, it's, you know, sort of an ET walks in the room or whatever. I I, I can deal with that. <laughs> I can deal with that. Yeah, if you look you at know? it relatively, I, I see what you're saying. But you you're talking about interacting with the this physical realm, which I believe the the Christian mystic Doskalos he called that exomatosis, where he actually. You know, he did that. He talks about sometimes he did that and the people that didn't believe him where he did experiments where he moved a knife off somebody's dresser or something. Kind of like that movie Ghost, you know, where he's trying to figure out how to touch things in the physical realm. So to me, that's fascinating. But I know that it, it's got to be real because the people that I've studied about astral travel are the people that have guided me to be able to do what little bit amount I've been able to do. And they all talk about this. So it is a real I thing, right? Oh, totally real. And I tell you what really um, rang home for me was um, an experience where I'd, um, I'd, I'd injured, I'd injured my, I, I was playing with the, um, well, often you come back with realizations from the astral and I sort of had this real realization that very strong realization of the illusion and, and that our physical bodies are somehow, um, you know, in a perfect state, they're perfectly healed at all times and anything is, 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 um, is, is part of the insanity that we think otherwise. And I remember I, I had this feeling of I was going camping somewhere because I love surfing and um, I kind of knew something was coming. You know, when you kind of know this foreboding and I thought, you know, it's a beautiful sunny weather, but I remember going over with my wife, should we go or not? And I thought, oh, no, let's get, let's venture into this because yeah, there's something going to happen. And um, I remember the, um, my first wave actually surfing and then um, there was a weird step in the wave and my knee went split to one side and I, came off my board and my knee was dangling and I thought that that was it. <laughs> that was the weird thing that was going to happen. Um, so, so I went to the doc and he said, well, look, you're going to have to have an op because um, you've, you've torn something in your knee. So, uh, but I remember he was kind of op a young optimistic doc and he said, who knows what's going to happen. And I remember that opened a door and it somehow, uh, you know, uh, it, it somehow resonated with what was going on within me. And I, so that night I thought, look, we'll stay camping and my friends can surf and I'll just be in my, um, you know, my cast. 
around my knee. But and I was lying there. I thought, okay, I'd gone into mantras using mantras to go astral. So I'm lying in the tent. I'm thinking, okay, this mantra felt right. So it, there was no resistance within any of the words because often now I look for resistance because I think resistance is what's sort of driving the the whole karmic thing. We can get into that. But as I'm um, lying there, I'm thinking, okay, uh, I had this mantra of I deny the illusion of my injured knee and I give thanks for my perfect health. And it, and it felt right to say it. So I kept saying, I deny the illusion of my injured knee and I give thanks for my perfect health. So when I say a mantra, and as 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 I mentioned earlier, I was pretty crap at falling asleep anyway. So I need to, as a kid, I'd have to sing songs to fall asleep or have to make stories. And I realized that's the human condition. When people fall asleep, they generally fracture into these characters of some kind. Um, that's part of the program we have. So the whole thing is to be as lucid as possible. So anyway, I, I will get it. Remind me to get into that lucidity concept because a, as I'm um, saying this mantra over and over, nothing happens. And I wake up at the night, nothing happens. And I, every time I wake up, I keep saying it. Uh, it's beyond dawn. Nothing has happened. And then I decide to caterpillar onto my front because it was difficult to move. So I sort of go onto my stomach. As soon as I hit my stomach and it's beyond dawn, you know, my wife's next to me, I can see the light out the tent, I'm awake. Um, the vibrations come, these vibrations you talked about before. So yeah. it's like, woo, 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 right. woo. but these vibrations are like a bull roarer. I don't know if you've ever heard one of those. It was like a, it was really 3D vibration. It was like, woo, woo, really loud. And I'm thinking, hang on, I'm awake. <laughs> I can't have an astral experience now. Now, these vibrations got stronger and stronger. And I'm thinking, holy crap, I'm totally awake. I'm not even anesthetized by sleep, you know. And this is weird. And then I hear my own voice once again speaking through a kind of a resonator. Would you believe he's saying the Lord's Prayer? Now, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a Catholic or a practicing Christian. And um, as a kid, yeah, I'd gone to church um, and then had stopped uh, pretty early on. But And I couldn't, I couldn't even recite the Lord's Prayer. And it was saying the, the Lord's Prayer. Mm-hmm. And every time I got to on earth as in heaven, it would repeat those lines on earth as in heaven, and it would keep on saying the Lord's Prayer as well. So the two of my voices going on, one saying the entire Lord's Prayer over and over, and the other one just saying on earth as in heaven. And you're and awake. I'm thinking, and I'm and awake, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm actually thinking, freak out. I'm awake. Um, what has the Lord's Prayer got to do with this? Um, why my voice? What's going on? And then... As this is going on, the vibrations get stronger and stronger with this vo vo vo. My body is lifted <laughs> off the, um, the 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 air mattress, like up to about a foot or two feet off the off the ground. I'm turned, and I'm and I'm freaking out. You're levitating. Right? Are you talking about your physical body was levitating? Physical physical body levitating. What? And then I'm and and then I'm lowered. And as I'm lowered down, so I'm I'm hovering. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and as I'm lowering down, all these little fingers are on my, my knee, working away like, you know, micro fingers. And then I'm feeling these fi- these hands around my feet and I'm and I'm just looking straight up and I am freaking out and I scream. I also scream to prove to myself that I was awake, which I was. <laughs> you scream. I just sort of, yeah, I just, just <laughs> ah, you know, the shit, ah, whatever, you know, just like. I would have too, what? probably. Yeah, it was too much. I mean, I was a, looking back. I was a wimp. I, I could have stayed with it a bit longer and seen what would have happened. But I never had a physical astral. Plus, there were these hands about to pull me out of body. Sometimes when you go astral, you feel hands jerk you out from the ankles, which can be unceremonious. But you know, it can be effective. As I said, these beings have the right to do it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. That's my experience. Um, yeah, they were trying say, to no. help you. Do you they think you commanded me. them, or do you think that they were just part of you, maybe? I, all of the above. Yeah, I think I think both. I I don't even know. Look, the, my I only know what I know and what what I've actually experienced. Even now, I can't look. If I think back, I think I obviously called it in. But the realization was in my cells that okay, this isn't real. And and the upshot was uh, after ten days, I remember mowing the lawn with my cast, you know, using the mower as, um, as like crutches because <laughs> I was on crutches. And then I just sort of let the mower go and go, holy shit, I can walk. And then I took right. it off and there was no op. And I remember the doctors think, well, this is outrageous. You know, you should be playing squash after a few weeks, you know? So, um, it was like it, something happened, um, as well as the meditation. So there was a healing. I felt there was some kind of expedited healing, but for me, once again, it was the phenomenon that was uh, the whole way along. I think that's why I've, kind of attracted the phenomenon is because I'm 
not really reactive to what's actually going on. And I've learned to be unreactive. Now, so so if you're in the astral and, and you go, holy shit, or wow, that's amazing, you generally get pulled back into your body. So if you're in a high emotionally charged state, you generally get pulled back. So I, for selfish reasons, I would become less emotional as much as I could when I'm in the astral. But that also had the knock-on effect of becoming less emotional in this reality. So um, I, I just, I just, you know, the, the triggers that are pushed by the mainstream to be, oh, isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible? These poor people suffering. You know, you're, you should say, you know, you should, you, you should be lucky that you're doing a job you can't stand because there are those people who don't have any food. You know, this whole, <laughs> this whole manipulation um, is very much part of the, well, I've, I only know, a, a, you know, a, what, what we probably call a Christian society, but that's very much inbuilt into, into us, this notion that we are, somehow uh, not good enough or somehow we should sacrifice our lives for the greater good whatever that is so i was very very conscious of that and um so i i, f I found that to stay isolated from the human emotional experience doesn't mean you're going to be cold-hearted i found um i used to meet these guys there were the astral elevators used to open up i know i'm ranting here but why not there, there were these well, we got to take a break, Greg, but you're talking about okay. astral elevators. I'm going to try to leave it there if we can remember to, <laughs> to, to talk about that when we come back. Fascinating stuff. There's also some questions, Greg, in the chat room about how to get past that vibratory state. And there's some other stories Greg has for you, I'm sure. And we're going to go down this road. You guys don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Greg Doyle. I'm Joe Roop. This is Spaced Out Saturday. Stick around. The freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social media freedom is the free app in your app store. No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social media freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. The first annual Caribou Paracon is happening September 28th to 30th in the 108 Mile Ranch, British Columbia. Brought to you by the Canadian Society of Questers and Spaced Out Radio. Come listen to our featured speaker, Grant Cameron, along with Elizabeth Anglin, Paisley Town, Mike Morin, Eric Cooper, and more. It's a three-day supernatural adventure at the Spruce Hills Resort and Spa. Tickets for the weekend are $150 Canadian. The Caribou Paracon, celebrating everything paranormal. Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. EscapeWatches.com There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. 365 days a year, we're in the field, investigating UFO sightings, talking to alien abductees, and visiting secret military locations like Area 51. We're UFO Seekers, official partner of Spaced Out Radio. Follow our daily search for the truth at ufoseekers.com or like us on social media. Catch us on Spaced Out Radio every third Monday of the month as we discuss Area 51, UFOs, and more. And also, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. It's paranormal news at its finest. Welcome to The Encounter. At spaceoutradio.com, The Encounter Online is SOR's trusted news source for everything weird and strange going on around the world. This is news editor Eric Markham. Our team of journalists are scouring the planet for those strange stories that rarely make the mainstream. No fear-mongering or fake news here. Head over to spaceoutradio.com and encounter The Encounter. Want to learn more about aliens, cover-ups, conspiracies, cryptids, and the paranormal? All you have to do is tune in S4 as we take over the Spaced Out Radio Night, starting at midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern, each and every Saturday night, right after Spaced Out Saturdays. Hi there, this is Eric Cooper from Forest Moon Paranormal. Join me, Corey Ruiz, and friends as we discuss the hot topics of the night. It's fun, entertaining, and as dark as the night. Find us at spacedoutradio.com. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Do you want to know what's really going on in your world? Do you have questions about who you can trust in the mainstream media? Then look no further than the Rebel Planet. Come get the straight answers right here at spacedoutradio.com. Join me, Jamie Sexton, creator of Rebel Planet News, as I fill you in on the stories behind the stories. All you truth seekers, be sure to tune in to Rebel Planet on spacedoutradio.com the third Thursday of every month. Heading to Vancouver and looking for some great nightlife? The Moose Vancouver is the place to be. Catch a game on one of the big screens or just come rock out to your favorite 80s and 90s hair bands. Great food starting at $6.95. The Moose Vancouver is open until 2 a.m. nightly. It's easy to find near the corner of Nelson and Granville. The Moose Vancouver is the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. There, this is Tess Nicole Thomas, and I'm going to take you for a ride every Sunday night on Spaced Out Sundays. I'm going to set up your week with some strange tales from across North America, from psychic readings, Sasquatch, UFOs, to the most haunted locations. Come join me at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, and let's get weird together. I'd love for you to join me. Spaced Out Sundays at spacedoutradio.com. Are you interested in advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Head to our website at spacedoutradio.com and click on our advertising tab. There, you will find an assortment of ways you can get your product out there with us, from radio commercials to banners and social media. Have a product you like our hosts to endorse? We can do that too. Visit spacedoutradio.com for more details. Looking for nighttime adventure? Old school radio that delves into everything out of the norm. Then check us out at Spaced Out Radio. This is Dave Scott. Every Monday through Friday, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, we're going to take you on a wild ride ranging from conspiracies to true crime and every ghost, alien, and Sasquatch story in between. We're always live and we're always interactive with you. So join us at spacedoutradio.com, where together, we own the night. The opinions expressed by tonight's guest do not represent the opinions or position of Spaced Out Radio, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with SOR Media. Listener discretion is advised. This is Spaced Out Saturdays with host Joe Rube. You can follow Joe on Twitter at Lighting the Void. And if you want to call into tonight's show, dial 501 777 5631. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. Now, from the deep south of Arkansas, here is Spaced Out Saturday host, Joe Roop. Welcome back to Spaced Out Saturday. I am your host, Joe Roop. Don't forget, Spaced Out Radio is here for you seven nights a week, right here on spacedoutradio.com. Also on the fringe.fm as well. We are here with Greg Doyle, astral traveler, coach, and author. And before we went to the break, Greg was talking about astral elevators and I kind of had to stop it there, but it was a good place to leave off. So are you, what do you mean by that? Are there different levels or was it kind of just like symbolic elevators? Well, uh, what would happen was at the end of the bed, uh, there'd be an elevator. So I'd go astral and I know I was out of my body because the vibrations once again, as you talked to would come and I'd sort of feel myself shift. <clears throat> then at the end of the bed, it was like there was an elevator. And I get into the ele- physical elevator because, it, but it was astral. Mm. And I get in there, and I had the feeling, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go up. And I'd go up, and and there'd be all these like eyes, like there'd be these levels, and these eyes would look at me, like sometimes a pair of eyes, sometimes two pairs, sometimes three pairs. And it was like they were checking me out. Um, it was really weird. I remember going to one place, and I thought, well, this is beautiful. Um, it was like a paved cobblestone area, and it was it looked like a sort of a European 
um, gentle summer's day and people were drinking coffee and stuff. And I thought, what on earth? Why am I here? And I was looking at the paving. This is really, really real. I said to one woman, where am I? Because I got out here at the elevator and she just said, you're in heaven. I just thought, well, that's pretty funny. Um, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> if there's an actual place called heaven. But, 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 but what really happened with these places that I go to again and again was a room. Uh, around a table, and there were these beings. These beings looked humanoid, but were not human. And I would go back there again and again, and they would talk on certain issues through the through their heads, and I would hear it through uh, the top of my head and come into my brain. And it was quite profound. And in the beginning, I thought, well, these are these are cold-hearted individuals because I felt they didn't really smile or giggle that much. And um, after a while, I started to realize that it was because they didn't have any emotional bodies. And and I actually re- – so that, that and you could really look them in the eye. It was like there was no um, – feel, feel, it was like there was no barrier. Like they had s- simply no ego. There was nothing they were pushing at all um, in their entity. There was no – nothing they were holding on to, no identity, no identity whatsoever. Now, when they would talk on issues, I would try to um, understand <laughs> – no idea what they were saying. I could hear the words that would come into my brain in English. I I had no uh, grasp of what was going on. And night after night, I'd, I'd see them. And we went around like in a circle. And then it came my turn to talk. And I was kind of thinking, okay, I've got no idea what I'm going to say here. And then they looked at me. And then as they looked at me, uh, the words came out of my head. It was really interesting. So I didn't speak. Uh, any of the beings I see in the astral, most of them, I, I, the words come out of my, my telepathically. And I started talking, and I'm not a well at that stage not a I'm not a particularly political person, but I was talking about the you know unequal distribution of resources and how that's affecting our structure and the poverty and all whatever. It was quite a coherent uh, little speech about the situation on Earth, and it came from no actual uh, intent, intent, uh, conscious intent. It was like that their their focus on me um, brought out this information. So what I'd realized, and, and what, what, what was interesting was the last time I went back there, I really liked these people. I realized that they're actually great. And I felt very at home. I remember the last time I was with them, I didn't want to come back. I remember saying, I'm not going back. I had a, I had a discussion with them. They said, you've got to go back now, Greg. And I said, I'm not going back. Um, and this was a, a few years back now. And um, and they said, um, when I still really hadn't come to terms with with this experience or integrated into my, my, my human life, and... Um, and I didn't want to go. And uh, I remember, re- and they said, "Look, you, you'll be, you'll be, um, you'll be home. You'll be home soon. It's okay." And it was very reassuring. But I just always, it, what I, how, what, it, what happened then in my actual life? Once again, it was the phenomenon. I found myself becoming unreasonably authentic. What that means is, as you know, in many work structures, at the, at the time I was still involved with music, classical music can be very. Um, and teaching in music can be a very diplomatic situation. I found myself unconscionably saying the truth or how I felt in a situation that even in my career, my conducting career, I found myself saying things to very important people who I didn't realize that was so important. I just, and someone said, Greg, you shouldn't have said that. What do you mean? You, you've blown your chance. And I go, what do you mean? You, well, that was how I felt. You know, but I, I, it just came out. It just came out. So I found hanging around with these beings, I... Um, this 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 new authenticism that came through me kind of railroaded my career. Basically, uh, banged a lot of doors shut in in my old career, and I kind of um, start start on the way on the way to become unemployable, <laughs> if you like. It was kind of amusing on many levels as well. But um, there's there's a couple of yeah, so so that elevator experience is yeah, and like that, as I said, that would happen, and then then after that whole chapter finished, the elevators never popped up again. So often, the, you know, there can be a wormhole at the end of the bed, or there can be you know, a little monster, or um, what what one such situation. I remember early on, there'd be a screeching vibration. I go, this is this vibration is not particularly nice, but I go out of body with it anyway. So the actual vibrations call you, or they are resonating with an aspect of you. And you can choose to go. It's a little bit like I actually feel the vibrations are actual beings, you know. So, on, on a level, they are actual be they're actual guides, and they can be representing different, um, you know, motivations or different frequencies. So your body is literally vibrating at a quick frequency, and there there are many frequencies to go into. So I, I would go along with these jet like screeching vibrations, and um, as I'd fly out into space. I'd see all of the thousands of astral bodies being pulled out 
at night. And, yeah. and I'd get onto these huge um, spaceships, like massive spaceships. And um, the beings on them were tall, uh, white skin, blonde. They would have been over seven foot tall. Um, kind of weird eyes. Um, and they never spoke. It was always telepathy. And I remember one time I um, – it was kind of like um, – plate metal the ship it was like that very sort of gray metal everything was very mod the structures they even fed us and um i'd even try to relate to some of the other it was like i had to really stay with it to stay above to stay above um to stay conscious I had to, it was like i was treading water and i remember um uh, trying to tell some of the other astral bodies to say look do you, you know we're on a ship here and they sort of be they'd be drunk they're like zombies Anyway, I went out one, there was like a circular door once, um, and I went out and I, and I thought it was interesting because I was just going through the ship and um, I found myself on, on a piece of grass. It felt like grass, but it wasn't the earth. And then this um, tall white came out and he, and he said telepathically, you can leave whenever you want. You can even uh, take your own life, but we will always have access to your energy and that's all we need. And that was... Um, even take your own shock. life. Yeah, he said, we'll always have access to energy. And that was the beginnings of um, sort of a, kind of a look into the whole karmic situation that we, we seem to be ensnared. And what I what I felt was, and then they'd feed us. I remember they'd feed us really uh, good food. I'd look at the cutlery. The plates was very good. We are in huge um, mess halls. And uh, before one meal, they were, they were slaughtering a, a cow in a room not far. And you, we could all hear the cow being slaughtered. You could hear the cow screaming. Oh, yeah. And these tall whites were sort of like standing sentinel around the room. They weren't, they weren't nasty in any way. Uh, they didn't do anything nasty. And anyway, I stood up. I slammed my cutlery and I said, where next? After the, uh, the sounds of the um, – <laughs> so, so I just felt moved to say that. I remember a lot of the zombies looking up at me. That was the last time I was invited back to that frequency. And, uh, but, you know, I, I still had the feeling that once again it was, you know – Do you feel this, like you didn't belong there? Oh sure, but I mean, I think it was it was being shown something. That was the the first kind of time I was shown something that was kind of what you would call sinister. I don't actually see the sinister now. I think that um, I was shown later that there's, as I said, this collusion between certain races and and humans to keep us subjugated. But it was a feeling that our energies um, are being um, recycled, if you like, or the unconscious human reactive energy and a lot of that has to do with the emotional body i've since been shown that so um what i found the states in the astral you just you feel great um it's not because i got a chocolate ice cream um you just feel great now in the in the 3d in what we call the 3d in the in the, the, the 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 human realms it's very much you know you think of the way love is shown as a, as a kid you know like do that clean up your room and i'll show you my love so you know you're gone um, a very conditional, uh, it's, that's, that's of course a, a, con a conditional, um, like model of love, which, sure. which is based, the karmic system is based around that notion of good and bad. And that good and bad concept is after a while starts to get shot down when you, when you just feel, um, I'll, I'll cut now to it, to a great experience I had, which, which was, which was absolutely pivotal in this, in this particular, on this subject. Once again, it was a chapter of experiences. I get taken out. I would be in a void. In this void was this being who seemed to show itself as a woman. She had, um, um, her skin was crawling with maggots. Her, her eyes seemed to be crawling. Her hair was like worms. And the stench, because your senses are very strong, the stench was abhorrent. And, um, and she was got these balls of energy and was and was throwing them at me and it hit me on the shoulder and I wake up and I thought, hang on, that hurt. Um, and I remember that that was a that was a crucial stage of my kind of astral career. That was before the tweak in the brain. I remember thinking, okay, there's three there's three ways here. Either I'm going mad, and I need to get help, um, I, or, or or I can just go out and do this on on my own. And I just thought I'll just go out on my own. So night after night. This went on for a couple of weeks. I'd be taken, I'd go out of body consistently. I'd be in this void. Here was this creature throwing balls of energy. Now, someone said that sounds like Buffy the Dragon Slayer. And I, and I, and I remember saying, I don't watch Buff and Buffy. <laughs> right. I have no idea about that. But it's interesting that there's these um, 
uh, in, in many of our myths or many of our stories we have, uh, a lot of these archetypes, they come from the astral. Yeah. I was always wondering that in the movies and yeah, everything, they're, where they're does there. this stuff come from? They're there. And, and, and this is what I mean about the emotional system. The fear is further pushed by a lot of these movies by Hollywood so that we are too scared to experience this state so that we carry all of this vibration with us, this fear, and then these archetypes pop up in the lower astral. That's what happens. Do you think there's so, a purpose for it though, Greg? Like, Here's the thing that that I'm having a problem with. Well, a couple of things, actually. You know, um, Israel Regardi, who was a Golden Dawn magician, says that the astral realm isn't, it, it's a place for spiritual development. It was never meant for a place to play around in, right? Mm -hmm. And then yet others say, well, I don't agree with that. You know, the, it's a place for just awareness and you can play all you like. There's no guilt that comes with it. But yet you were talking earlier about etiquette like astral realm etiquette, almost as if it's a golf course or something. And that, that I can see. So, I mean, based on all your travels, is there an, is, is it like a tool? Do you think it's a purposeful place or is it just a, another state of awareness? I think it's totally purposeful. And then we'll get this, this notion of, notion of lucidity is what it's all about. Um, first of all, when we say the astral realms too, it's actually kind of loosely translated. So the astral body is that body that, you know, um, we say the fourth body of the human energy system. So it's the one powered by the heart, which is the fourth chakra. So it very, the chakras are very much, and when you see the astral body, very much part of the astral makeup. So, so you could say that the astral realm is the fourth dimension, which is like when you're out of this body in this dimension, in the in the dimension closest to this, where ghosts hang around, where and things look as like an astral um, imprint of this, but. But really, when we say astral realms, we loosely mean going into higher and higher realms. So there are all these frequencies you can move into that are very, very blissful, where you can connect, you know, like where the OM is and all these, that's pre-manifest state. So you can go back and see the Big Bang, or you can, you know, you can go into the Akashic Records and see dinosaurs, that, that, that kind of stuff. So really, if you're talking literally of the astral realm, what they, what they talk, I think, the fourth dimension, if you like, the closest mm -hmm. one. Then that is something that's very reactive realm. It's a reactive a realm that uh, the human fears feed into. It's it's a it's a bit of a trapping realm at the moment. Um, like when there was the G20 uh, here. Um, the, this is the you know the government uh, when the U.S. government and all the governments of the G20 were visiting Brisbane a few years ago. Man, for two weeks, I was in astral lockdown. I've got this special design, you know. NASA designed anti gravity chair that I've got in my astral room, and um, I'd, I'd go out of body, and all these guys were coming in, in suits, and I go, well, "What's going on? They're, they're all spies. They're all astral spies from the from um, the various administration." See, yeah, I've just always to, wondered to, about that. Like, do they know, well, yeah. and do they control it? Huge. Listen Huge. to this, well, Greg. Just, just real quick, yeah, just, Bob Bob Monroe talked about this, and I believe it was in his in his first book. Once he figured out, see, he heard the voices and all this stuff, and once he figured out he can move in these realms, then he started to ask himself, well, if I can do it, how long have we been doing this? And if we've been doing this, the government, if they know about it, are they controlling aspects of this? And he kept, he would bring that up, and it really got me thinking. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can verify that personally, and, and it was like, it was a feeling of like, you know, being wedged. Like uh, what I saw literally was during those two weeks, mind you, you know, I had like, you know, Obama's helicopter fleet. There was a, a lot of security in, in Brisbane. Brisbane was in shutdown. That was why they didn't have it in Melbourne or Sydney because the Brisbane was a small city. So um, the, the room, would, my house would just fill up with entities. Um, quite quite bizarre. And I'm thinking, well, why, 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 am, why is it so interesting here? And maybe they, they're able to... Um, get a signature of someone who's maybe going out of the body a bit with consciousness because it seems that um, It seems that most humans are doing it unconsciously So therefore not getting a, a lucid kind of grasp on it, but it, you know as soon as that two weeks was up They were, they were gone. So it was just they were monitoring um, Once again, I wouldn't call it sinister per se. It's just those that have the tools use them um, Why wouldn't you you know? Um, so it is an interesting subject, um, and I know the Monroe Institute. That there's um, um, the CIA have mm -hmm. taken that up. Yeah, and like at the time I was reading, both you know Bob Monroe and you know some occult text as well, and 
you know, the silly little rituals of drawing a circle and using visualization with colors and stuff. I'm like, well, this is kind of Harry Potter like, right? But as I kept going into this, I realized what if you really are creating these things in the astral realm, the circle of light, the colors, the protection. And, uh, that's when kind of, like I told you on break and I guess I'll admit it now, that's kind of when those things started happening to me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Look, you, you're spot on. I think you, you, you're, um, you're resonating with the frequency that has been, that has been strengthened and put into place. It's like when I tried, um, Reiki symbols in the astral, I, I thought, wow, you know, this, this, uh, this energy coming from the stars, you know, and, and I, and I was sort of kind of preempting that different things would happen. So it was interesting that like these things are very powerful and, and, um, you know, like putting white light around you, all this stuff, um, it is a, a levels of protection and because uh, this is a sticky reality and when i go into the shopping center you know there's a lot of unconscious kind of emotional debris a lot of stuff out there that's floating from from people often through their eyes so i find if you put layers of protection around yourself i know it sounds um um kind of negative or it sounds a bit defensive but it is a sticky reality a lot of people have got a lot of um stuff with them so what I find is if you if you do that kind of protection, you don't make so much eye contact with 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 um, random people. It doesn't mean you won't have, um, you know, great connection and, and authentic connections with people. It just means that uh, the random eye locking doesn't happen so much. So through the eyes, stuff moves. It, and it um, does, yeah, and it does make me worry about like what other things have an effect on the astral real, realm, like yeah, yeah. as myself and as a superconscious, as a collective. All the posts, the news, the social media, the symbolisms that we look at and everything. It's almost like, you know, it's safer if you get, I guess you could get too crazy about it. It's safer to stay in your own cave, you know, sometimes. But you know, you know what, you, you're right. And it is a great point. And, and let me get back to, to and, and this is, is part of this, that, that when I was getting out and that, and that, and that being was hitting me with these energy balls, right? Because this, this will go into this. And um, because I was encountering a lot of, you know, monsters or, or what we would perceive as negative energies in the astral and thinking, okay, what's going on here? And um, then I found I could um, also summon up these balls of energy and intercept her balls of energy. So I, I couldn't make a direct hit, but I could intercept. And then after a while, she actually called me by name. So often in the astral, your name is, and she said, and, and this, this being was repugnant, like really the personification of evil. Um, and she said to me then, Greg, you're getting good at the whole defending thing, aren't you? And I thought, okay, once again, I, I'm interested in the phenomenon. I thought, you know, she's calling me by my name. Um, you know, I thought this is interesting. So, you know, I, that's where I stay emotionally detached from things almost because it, this was really scary. You know, it's uber real. We're hovering and avoiding this woman night after night or this being this. Anyway, then she's right by me. Now, once again, it's not the intellectual thing. Once I, I realize the mind is so different to what we've been taught. It's the opposite of what we've been taught. So she's right in front of me, and I'm about to pass out through fear. The stench, the look, to see someone's eyeballs with everything, with, 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 with these maggots moving around them. I mean, it's, it's an appalling sight. Mm. Now, it is a non-intellectual thing, but at the time I had this wave of empathy from my heart. So my heart just like poof, opens up. My astral heart just opens up for some uh, unknown reason, I feel this wave of empathy for her. As I do, her face um, immediately transforms into one of absolute radiance. She's absolutely beautiful. And she says, you see, Greg, it's all the same. So profound. And I remember at that time, I sort of came to with this incredible bliss, and I realized that this, this notion of evil was part of the illusion. I realized there's no such thing as evil. It's just the sh our own, it's just the light seen through our own shadow. And I really knew this. It was like something that I can't, I, I, I'm not even interested to talk someone into believing. I knew it. From, and from that time on, I just haven't been hassled in that way. And I find it's funny when you talk about these things in the astral affecting and what's going on. A, a while back, um, I was living in Spain uh, when I wrote the, the, this book a few years ago. And um, we're around um, uh, was a chiringuito, they call them, you know, you, you're on the beach having a, having a drink and um, – very social situation and you know i people there didn't know what i did it was just a you know a few people around and um, then this girl started telling me about you know totally out of context started telling me about uh, these terrible suicide attempts she'd she tried and um 
and everyone's kind of starting to listen and she's like going in graphic detail of these attempted suicides and what what had been happening to me this this as i could talk about this lack of emotional reactivity is this kind of like one of those um you know those fat buddhas you find in those um cheap stores you know yeah, those, i've got a couple of them <laughs> yeah. yeah i've got one i've got a wooden one on my desk well one he literally popped up in my stomach at a certain point it was really weird so what, what, what would happen is it, this was a classic example she's telling me about the suicide then i could feel him start to to belly rumble i'm going oh no this is not right and then he really started to laugh and then and then i, I of course i gave it away and i said she could see it in my eyes then i started to belly rumble i started to laugh and the whole circle was just looking at looking at us going, what's going to happen here? And she's looking at me like, how dare you do this? And then after a while, she starts to burst into a, 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 a laugh, and then everyone's laughing. And the whole thing's forgotten. It's the ridiculousness of the situation. And I don't mean to belittle her situation at all, but a little bit like the, the being in the astral who was throwing the energy balls. It just happened. Now, we're taught to be intellectual about things and look at the through. The, the mind is all through us and around us. Um, and that is a great way to prepare the astral body is to, is to let go of any holding patterns. A lot of the fear that is programmed out it, it puts you into hold, whether it be an insurance ad. doesn't matter how clever we are. If we're watching a TV show and there's an ad about life insurance and you can be very clever going, oh, that adds a lot of rubbish. It's that a vibration that's going into your brain. Yeah. Your brain through, through resonance, parts of your brain will vibrate with that. Simple as that. And the, and the symbols are penetrating your subconscious and the, and the song and everything, you know. My word, my word. The, the, the subconscious knows no negative. The universe knows no negative. It is what it is, you know. The, the, even the notion of I am that I am. It's not I am not that I am not, you know. It, it's very much a positive universe, benevolent universe. And these very powers of positivity are used by the illusion to create what we perceive to be negativity. But more and more, like when you tell me about those very, uh, those things that are, are streamed out, I feel the, the laugh within me. It's just rubbish. It's, it is the illusion. What about the individual though, Greg? And just let, just hear me out here. Everything that I've, mm -hmm. when I get into this deep, I start with astral travel, then you're dealing with the ego and the individual. You look at the Kabbalistic tree of life and it shows all these cool things till you get to the top and then it's limitless light and limitless nothingness and everything all is one type stuff, right? And then even uh, a YouTube channel that I used to watch. This guy's name is Joseph March. I've had him on the show. He's got a channel called The Grand Infinity. He got a massive following because he was studying these things on YouTube. And then his last episode he puts out... He just says, you know what, I, I just realized that we're all nothing. We're all everything. It's, I can't teach you anything, yada, yada, and shut his whole channel down. And I'm like, whoa. So, I mean, at what point does this become, is, is that a good thing? Or is that, do you, be, do you start getting into destructive patterns because you're going out of your mind a little bit? You see what I mean? It seems like it's maybe ignorance is bliss in a little bit of a way. You know, Joe, it's great you said it because as you say it, I can even feel my astral body rippling. You really hit the nail on the head, and um, maybe it's my journey. Is my journey is all our journeys are our own journey. But as a result, I've kind of deliberately detached from um, uh, like uh, reading or, or um, looking into a lot of this stuff because I want to experience it firsthand. Right now, what I feel it's funny say because I didn't know that, but what I feel is this is what, what I was going to say to you. Um, one goes into that feeling of um, when you get through the past the fear. Um, is the feeling of this absolute bliss. And then you go into a feeling of nothingness. And it's the most beautiful feeling. And um, even now, as an individual, you know, and it sounds trite, um, kind of out of context, or how can one put it into context, but I feel kind of invisible. I feel that I am nothing. And it's the most wonderful feeling you can't imagine. And it, it, it makes me feel so good, this feeling of that I literally am, as I said, it sounds trite, but I feel that I am literally the universe, and all, all of us are the universe experiencing itself uh, through, through ourselves. Through ourselves, so, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're just um, um, vessels of the universe because, you know, one great meditation I used to take, because I, I'd often play around with consciousness, and I'd look, I'd look for um, resistance because I think resistance is what the illusion plays with, and, and there's a lot of resistance in emotional bodies. That's why I say if you've got... You know, emotional issues, have a look at them because they're the things that will bring you back into it. They're, they're the, that's the karmic driver. But I find that um, well, like one word of resistance I had was the word God because being brought up um, 
a Christian, but they're not being into it. I always thought the word God is a very loaded word. And I thought, well, what is, why do I have an issue with that word? So I would deliberately do a meditation um, using that word because I wanted to diffuse that resistance. I wanted to not fight it, but diffuse it. So I'd, I'd go to bed and I think, okay, um, if my hands are the hands of the universe. So I could say my hands are the hands of God, you know, or I am. Uh, my 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 rubbish thoughts are the rubbish thoughts of the universe because I am the universe incarnate. I must be. What else am I? <laughs> you know, I'm made up of the, the physical material, that uh, minerals and whatever, you know, stuff from star. So I, I'd kind of – and also you're going out of body a lot. You do really resonate. You know you are that. So it, once again, it goes beyond the intellectual. But I would, I would take myself through a little, a little meditation before I go to bed saying – before I go to sleep saying, you know, I'm the, my hands are the hands of God, my thoughts are the thoughts of God, you know, my stomach is the stomach of God, uh, the argument I had with what's his name was the argument of God, you know, whatever. And then I'd say, okay, so God is me. I am God. And so I felt that when I could – when I'm getting sleepy, I could accept that. In, mm. in, a, in a conscious state at the time, I couldn't. If I couldn't accept it, then I wouldn't use it for meditation. But can your you know? subconscious accept it? That's the programming. That's right. So the subconscious is an interesting little thing. Uh, look, it's he's put there to. Or it's put there as like um, you know, as it's almost part of the hard drive, if you like. Probably more software, but it's there to protect us on a certain level. Because you've heard of um, cognitive dissonance, where people's lives would be shattered so much. So a lot of, a lot of the illusion kind of feeds into the subconscious that only knows positive, that only knows what is. So it doesn't know that um, that is not real, what is not happening on the TV, you know, the, the programming. It doesn't know that is not real. So it wants to protect you. So it, it, a lot of the astral uh, meditations I do uh, with, with groups and people is to just kind of cajole the subconscious into allowing it to happen because, because believe me, uh, from what I've seen, everyone – Everyone has an astral body. The human body is actually um, dependent upon the astral body, not the other way around. The human body is like the the the, the, the fingerprint or the, the you know hit the touching dense the surface. form of it or something maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so really, we are a higher realized aspect, and, and the three Ds ourselves in the three D. But if we go to higher dimensional aspects, that's ourselves there. So the astral body exists before the three D. So it's the preemptive body. So like you know the the, the clear body, the clairsentience, clairvoyance, all that stuff is connected with with that astral um, astral um, awareness. Mm. So um, I found that um, what were we talking about, Joe? <laughs> we were talking about the astral body and. And ascending, like so. Here's like when you get to that yeah, point, the nothingness, the nothingness, yeah, the nothingness. right? And this it's, is no, what bothers me. Thing. This, I know it's oh. a wonderful thing, but individual. <laughs> see, here's the thing, and it scares me. I like life, okay. So when I hear these people talk about oh these different levels of ascension, and David J and I was talking about this in the uh, the Fringe FM chat room the other night. And this thing is great, but you know, just like I had a conversation with Laird's Cranton, I think life is just as beautiful. It's just, you know, like there's nothing really better than the other thing. It's all kind of codependent, you know? Yeah. When you say life, you mean life in 3d, do you? Yeah. Physical life. It's a great thing. Okay. Cause for me, um, it is a great thing, but it's been made greater for me. Um, having experienced death in this body, mm -hmm. like having, now I – and also, I'm, as I said, because I have very little um, – it's hard to put in a word, but like my memory is very limited. So um, if you think about it, a lot of the mindfulness exercises and meditations, the notion of being in the now. So if, you, if you're in the uber now, then of course you're going to forget the past. Uh, so what I mean by that is I, I love this life as well. But, but I, when I think of the word life – I see, um, I see every day as preparation for the mini death that is night, right? I see every day, okay. my whole day, all I, I'm basically a question mark throughout the whole day, questioning what is this around me, what is this this conversation here, what what is this state of being, so that when I'm at night, I'm more likely to ask myself, am I awake? Am I asleep? And by the same token, I see this lifetime as a preparation for death, not to come back into this karmic system, not to come back. Um, anesthetized not to come back uh, hypnotized that that's because look um the, there is a there is a, um 
I'll say it that that's and and it seems that others would agree who have seen these um, constructs out in the astral. There does seem to to be certain programs running here that um, certain frequencies that 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 do keep us on a, on a, on a kind of um, hamster wheel. You know, um, this this kind of whole uh, emotive thing, um, this this feeling of not good enough, this feeling yeah. of a, a, you know a good person is. Has the, is their back slightly bent and is doing the the job where they don't really want to do, but it's you know it's, it serves the banks, it serves the it serves it serves the, the, the society. Banks. It's all like a yeah yeah yeah. That's right, and and you see, you one well, I feel you can get to a point when that this this absolute um, this state of benevolence in in the in the higher realms. It's very much a win win situation. It's very much we're waking up from something. There is no such thing as evil. It's all serving us. It's all to wake us up. Even the illusion is so bloody obvious that it's waking us up. It's it's so clear that it is what is not. If well, and something. nothing beats flying either. When you fly for the first time, mm-hmm. and, I, and I mean not in a dream, but when you're going through trees and you can feel the leaves whipping you and stuff and it's real, it's something different, you know? So true, Joe. The actual phenomenon of it is amazing. And you feel more alive there. So that's why I question your definition of life. I mean, like for me um, – I want to bring those states into the 3D. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't. I, I I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. There are a lot of people who kind of uh, deny uh, being in the physical, um, and I think that is not the way to go. Um, I think I think when you integrate higher realities into the physical body, that's the way to go. And and so and and so um that feeling like you know when you go through trees and sense how that feels and even sense their essence that will make you relate differently to trees in in 3d you know and and then remarkable things happen in the 3d as well you know as i alluded to with with levitation but also other things um it's like it's a beautiful it is a it is literally a beautiful world regardless of what we're being pumped with you know the the, the, the dog but do you think there's something past that that's what i'm saying like you know, I talked to a Rosicrucian who told me, okay, you're astro. They related it because you see a lot of moon and sun uh, symbolism, right? So they related the the astral body to the lunar body, but they talk about the solar body or light body where you can actually ascend past this, yep. this thing of reincarnation and recycling and forgetting who you are. And you can live life through the stars, not just upon planets. And you, you forever remember. And then you read books of Thoth and Hermes and yes. Jesus and yes. all these people yes. who are actually yes. doing it, you know? Yep. And I'm yep. like, this is possible. It's got to be. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to, without a doubt. I mean, this, rea- um, you know, it's funny because the, the Australian Aboriginals talk about the dream time. And they also, I've met a, a few who talk, they also, you know, like all cultures, they talk of astral travel in, in their own ways. And um, um, what I found is, when you wake up astrally or do exercise meditation, it, it can also feed into the whole lucid experience, the whole lucid dream experience, which is like, um, you know, another a finger on the same hand. Now, when they talk of the dream time, they say that this is a dream state. And more and more, I'd have to agree with that. It's a dream state compared to what we truly are. So when I'm in the astral, my mind is much more focused. Um, when I'm in the physical, it's more fragmented. Um, it's it it the, the vibrations here, the programs that are running here, uh, are lower frequency. So, so for instance, uh, in my my dream state, I used to have a lot of uh, when I was a kid, I used to have lots of lucid dreams, and um, then they stopped for a while, but then they started up again. Um, that was because I remember I, I ended up I was drowning someone in a lucid dream when I was a kid. And I thought oh, I shouldn't have done that, but but I thought it was just a dream. But then I, now I'm I'm very conscious of dream figures. Um, and what I found is when I wake up in dreams in the beginning, I'd control them. That's what everyone does. Oh, I can control the dream. This is great. Then I realized, well, actually there's nothing to control. There's no drama. We're taught to have drama. You know, we're taught somehow that, well, oh, this is, this is terrible, whatever. Or there's some kind something to solve. Right. We're taught there's something to solve. What if there's nothing to solve? This earth very much depends on, or this, this dimension very much depends on the notion of something to solve. Now, so I found in dreams, I will just let the drama go, and I felt I felt this incredible bliss within me, and um, this idea first started, and I had an astral experience, where I just I just 
published this book on astral travel, so perhaps I was a bit, um, you know, concerned about how it'd be, be taken. But I was in the astral, and I was about to fly this beautiful kind of lake of silver, and um, there were these two guys behind me, and I felt they were kind of. Um, and this was way after that that last weird creature, you know, with the maggots and stuff. So, and I felt there was kind of an antagonistic energy coming from them. So I thought, well, I could fly away, but not let, let's confront this. Let's see what's going on. Because I actually look for that now. I look for some kind of, um, um, you know, what, what's what's the resistance there. So I, I turned around and then these guys came at me and they said, oh, something about you having a samsara moment. I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. I think it was Sam, something to do with samsara. Is that what you said? Well, that's what they said at the time. But at the time, I didn't know. I since looked into the word. But at the time, I had no idea what they were talking about. And they and they came at me and started to destroy me. And I let them do it. And and I felt this phenomenal bliss. This was, and and they were looking at me, go, what's going on? They were kind of you know smashing me, and and I felt this bliss. And then they just dissolved. I thought, now that was interesting, a little experience. So next time I was in a dream state, I thought, what I'll do is, if there's any antagonistic energy now, and, and if I'm awake in the dream, if I'm lucid, I'll let it do what it wants. So, you know, next time I'm driving a car into a cliff, I'll allow myself to go to the cliff. Next time I'm falling off the, 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 the mountain, I'll fall off the mountain. Next time, you know, whatever happens. And I found this phenomenal bliss each time, and I'm realizing, okay, um, that there's, it's, it's, it's this giving up of this, this, this concept of fight or that we're somehow disconnected or resistance. And I realized that my own, um, my 3D uh, being is wanting my dream state to be more and more lucid just as higher aspects of myself who seem to know more about me are wanting me to be more and more lucid it's a little bit like pulling pulling something from th through a murky uh, lake to the surface where it's very clear so like the high astral realms it's like you're very very clear and so um, i do feel we are evolving i do feel that we are waking up to something that doesn't need to play with these programs, you know, gotcha. that, that's, that's, you know, so There's, yes. And as I understand that I've, I feel like we're waking up too. There is a question in the chat from uh, Eric and I meant to ask this a while back because uh, Greg's got so many stories that, you know, this could go on for hours. I'm sure cool. you put a lot of this stuff in the book too, right? Most of yes, it. I did. Awesome. Yeah. But they, he's asking, Hey, I've gotten to that vibrational state you guys are talking about, but then what do I do? How do I get past that? Yeah, well, what what I my advice is this: um, during the day, um, relax, really meditate to the point. Where just just relaxing, getting the habit of relaxing your body, and relaxing the mind within your body. Just that intention, a couple of times a day, and often when you meditate like that, you kind of just go in and out of consciousness. And and every time you grab yourself, you're kind of becoming lucid. So then at night, when you do go astral you're more likely to go. So what's happening is in your physical body, um, there are aspects that are scared to go. Uh, there are aspects that are holding patterns. Uh, often it's around the gut. Um, and what that what happens is the vibrational state comes and you kind of wake up to it, but your body doesn't go. So there is this just subtle, probably very subtle fear that perhaps you're dying or that you're not going to come back or you're just freaking out. So, I, I think to relax yourself, what I what I'll often do is I'll relax myself, um, and then then when I'm relaxed, body and mind, I will then just kind of I will I will sort of tell my body and my subconscious, you know, tonight I'm going to go astral, or or maybe I'll say in a week I'm going to go astral, or like a lot of people who are scared, they're slightly scared, maybe to say in a week and sort of set it up a little bit of future date so it's not too urgent, and just to, when you're in a meditative state to suggest to yourself that um, it feels good. To, to leave the body it feels natural it feels good so to kind of uh, program uh, your subconscious if you like during the day when you're lucid in that way what i found really handy is that um i imagine my my astral body is already awake so i imagine now around me because the astral body is slightly larger than the physical body it sort of sits slightly outside so like the eyes of the astral are around the third eye that's why we talk about the third eye so much because that's actually where the eyes of the astral are in that that, that region so if you um, kind of imagine this body that is around you, if you like, um, so it's all it's all in the preparation, I guess, is what I'm saying. Because at right. the time, it's too late. At the time when the vibrations are there, you're either going to go or you're not going to go. 
So it's all in the preparation. It's all in the programming. You know, it's all, it feel really good when you go to bed at night. You know, and really you help good. people with that, Greg. To get yeah, well, that's basically what I do. Is 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 um, get people through that fear of it. And and I wouldn't do it if you know, like in the very beginning. I remember when I came back to Oz after I'd written the book, and it was a Theosophical Society in Melbourne. I thought, who was the Theosophical Society? Because there, there, there was Madame Blavatsky. I didn't know any any of that. And um, she started that years ago, and it was a lot to do with astral travel. And, and I remember the guy at the end of the talk said, "Greg, can you?" This was before I even thought of doing workshops, even though I'd seen myself doing workshops in astral experiences, <laughs> looking into the future. So um, I knew I was going to do it. But I, and he said, "Do you think people can do this?" I said, "I don't, I don't know." Well, and he said, "Well, why don't we set up a workshop?" I said, "Okay, we'll try it." And what I found was that there there was a percentage of people having experiences. So before that point, I would have thought maybe you can't, maybe you can't be, you know, it can't be relayed or maybe it can't be. But I think um, more and more just their experience, you know, I found um, people, um, yeah, people can actually experience this. So there is an awake, there is, you know, once again, as new age as it sounds, it is a reality. There is um, some form of quickening yeah. going on. I think you're right, though, because I don't have... Oh, I desperately want, there was two things I want to be able to do, Greg. I want to be able to get out of my body again, but I want to be able to move around in this realm just, just to do it. And the other one is to get beyond this place or travel. I've, I've yet to leave my yard, so to speak. And I think that's because I get so astonished when it happens that it yeah. kind of blows me back. But I would tell you, Eric, that from what I've done is when I start vibrating, the one time I was that I knew I had an actual experience, I just sat up. I did it very kind of like relaxed kind of set up. And it felt, Greg, like I was sitting up in my physical body. I was like, well, that didn't work. I actually set up, you know. And then I turned around and looked and I was like, oh, it did work because I'm laying there still, you know. But that was so yeah. long ago. And I wish I could get to these stages where you're at, you know. Look, I, I reckon. Um, I mean, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm I'm fascinated with the whole sleep thing. And as I said, I, I think I was kind of um, um, kind of primed from the beginning for this. So, so um, I think also what, what what people can do is like when they fall asleep. Not first of all, as you say, if you're really tired at night, it does help. If you're not, you know, I find if I'm really busy, um, I'm less likely to have it. You know, and then other times it just comes. But but. I'm more likely if I can meditate just a little bit, just be still a couple of times a day, then at night, it's like the cogs, you're looking for just that little bit of lucidity to tap into. So you just, if you're too exhausted, you're going to fall into the state, that state of kind of, you know, hypnotic slumber. But if you can just be not too tired when you go to sleep at night, you know, and um, also what I found is really good is to just watch everything. Like what is the difference between sleep and night? Like often I'll, um, in a dream, I'll often say, "Hang on, this is a dream," because during the day I'm always saying, "Is this a dream?" So I'm 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 always asking this question. And from a lucid dream state, you can go astral easier than you could before. And I'm finding other people can too. In the beginning, often that's the easiest way to go astral. Would you believe? So you can go astral for, directly from a physical going body asleep, then mind awake, but uh, all with vibrations coming. But you can go astral from a lucid dream state. And so you just um, to, to ask yourself, am I dreaming now? When I, when I say dreaming, I mean what we call dreaming, you know. So to constantly assess, are you awake in the 3D or are you in a dream? In, in a playful way, don't make it too much of a chore. That, that can help you wake up in the sleep state. But I just find that if I'm, if, if I, I guess now I kind of need that. Like my, for my nourishment, I need to be still with myself a couple of times a day. And that seems to be kind of, um, you know, fire, you know, wood, wood in the furnace of the astral experience. So I'm lucky that way because I, I need that. You know, I've needed that from a long time, a long time before it started happening. So I'd say to anyone who wants to experience it, to kind of um, um, cultivate being still with yourself a couple of times a day, and then have a real strong heart intention, like something that not so much to prove something, like. Like, you know, like the, the old saying, you go to a car to drive somewhere, you don't just go to the car. So with the astral experience, if you think, what would I like to experience? So something that you have um, a real heart connection with, because the heart seems to be the principal driver, the, that the heart chakra beats most. So you can think of something 
I think that's a hint into the, into the future of humanity as well, the fact that it is from the heart and what the heart implies with empathy and not sympathy. Empathy is a different thing. Sympathy is the what I call the emotion. Empathy is a feeling. So emotions are conditional and right. feelings and uh, feelings are non-conditional. That that is the I think the future of of the human state is to go into a feeling of, of unconditioned, mm -hmm. and it can help bring on the astral experience. So whenever you can. Um, think of what you would like to experience. Like, what is it you'd love to experience in the astral? And just sort of really hold that, meditate within your heart on that, and and ask for help. You know, ask your guides to help you. Like in the beginning, I demanded. Like when I got out a few times, I thought, what? You know, I remember once at once I got out, and there was like these um, laser lights going through my brain. I thought, why am I looking through my brain? It was like bzzz, it was just, it was so loud. It was like a dentist drill. And I thought, oh, I'm getting out of here. Next thing. That stopped, and I see this little screen being fitted in the right-hand corner, like a little four corners of a computer screen, and all these little hieroglyphs, like all these really weird, not earthly language going in there. And I feel the download, and then I'm shown all these weird devices, and I'm thinking, what's going on? And then that was sort of the beginning is of, of, of kind of uh, e ET stuff kind of thing. But but I found that um, – why did I talk about that then, Joe? Uh, yeah, one, one needs to set up – like, what because you you're going all over the place, man, because you've had so many experiences. You just have. It's hard. I'm trying to check them all in, man. But uh, to, to set up a trip, like, really, I really mean that. Like, yeah, to ask for help. What I realized was um, the ET thing, you know, to look, forget the word alien, forget the word ET. The, there, there is guidance that is beyond our human ken, if you like. Now, to call upon them, they do exist. I, I, I even got, that's right, I was having those weird experiences with ET things and technology, and I said, hang on, I, I want answers here. I, I'm, not, I'm not tolerating this. And I remember I refused to sleep for a while. I went on sleep strike. You know, I mean, go figure, well, why go on sleep strike? But I remember thinking, I want answers. And, I, and then that was when I was taken and shown to these guides. There was this, um, this guy and this woman, and um, they would tell me all about myself, and, and then I kept on coming back on what's going on, and then I would, I would start insulting them was early on. Just because I could, because this is my experience. Then uh, one of the woman, then the woman was showing me all of this uh, about auras, and I just thought, "What is going on here?" And then she said, "Greg, we've been watching you for some time. Why are you so sad?" And it was sort of like that was when I kind of early on I realized, okay, there is a spiritual significance to the astral thing. Um, it 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 had been before then a feeling of just phenomenon, but um, you can ask for guidance. It is my belief that. Um, the energies that that the vibrations that come and and um, uh, resonate with your uh, higher body, so they vibrate at a higher self, and your aspects of higher of your higher self that can be lucid. Okay, so what you're looking for is lucidity in a higher vibrational state, and what really helps that is, as you talked touched upon before, Joe, not really connecting to all the hype that is streamed out because that's going to keep you in a very physical, fearful state. Yeah, so, the world can get you sometimes. You know the, yeah, the bills. You know the the bills, your clothes, yeah. all everything that you worry about. You've you've forgotten how to go inside yeah. yourself for a moment. You know exactly, exactly. And 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 I think this this notion of invisibility for me is that you know really um, there are no worries. Like I mean, like yeah, I know that can sound a bit crap when you've got the bills and stuff. But I found things started to go right for me. That's as I say, the, the universe mm -hmm. is on your side. Um, I know that I woke up from an astral realization once they can hang on. My income is not um, reliant upon, or my, sorry, my, my well-being is not, or my my, my you know, physical well-being is not reliant upon my income. I, I just knew it. And within a week, I was given a new car. I remember my old car, I couldn't actually use the, the driver's door. You know, I couldn't, I had to go in the passenger door, already gone a half a million K, it just wouldn't give up. It's the... Um, I called it a Sherpa in thongs, my old car in my book. It was just, it was imbued with energy, but it didn't work. Um, and um, I remember someone who was, you know, just uh, grateful for, 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 for things just gave me a car. And then I remember people being pissed off at that, saying, Greg, how can you accept a new car from, from someone? And I thought, well, you know, gift. I can. Yeah. And I, I felt no resistance at all. And it's interesting how it can, it can press the buttons in people. And, um, it was this recognition, and it was. It, it took a little while to happen in the three D, but I sort of knew that. Um, and plus, I was becoming very authentic, and I was kind of um, 
kind of becoming uh, unemployable on on the level that I that I knew. So I, I knew that my world was about to do a U turn and that it was going to go in another direction. Then I had the tweak in the brain. I wrote the book and then I got into the whole astral um, world of sharing, you know. But uh, but it was funny the way that happened, you know. But but it first came with that feeling that oh, you know, I, I can just be myself. I, I'm not. I'm not as constrained as I thought I was. So first it's that realization that was in the astral, then it took a little while to come to the physical. So that's what I mean, the, the astral preempts the physical. So if you go into the astral and have these magnificent realizations, uh, you know it's going to come. So I guess your level of patience or your, you know, I knew, I, I could not be authentic. You know, I couldn't, you know, I mean, I would have appeared quite rude at the time to people because I just literally, you know, well, just, yeah, and I think that word <laughs> faith, <clears throat> we, you know, we were taught that word faith when we were younger, but I don't really think we know what it means. You know, uh, I think a lot of us think that um, faith is doing the best we can and then letting God take care of the rest. You know, sometimes yeah. I think that faith is actually doing what your heart is telling you to do and having faith in that alone, you know. So true. And so, so true, right? I think you're right. I think there are these words that are really powerful and these connotations that are powerful, but they've been so muddied. They've been so muddied by by certain um, dogmas and stuff. And I think you're right. I think that word faith has got to be brought back into the heart, you know, and, and really um, it's something that's very personal and something you can you, you can build on. It's not something that, that, that is that is outside of your, you know, control or, or hands. It's not something out of your hands, you know. It's um, Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. What I want to do is um... – Let's see. What I want to do is we got one section left of the show left here, and there's so many questions coming through. I want to make sure we get to them, but I do want to talk about, I want you to talk about that wolf story again, because that was fascinating for some of the people that haven't heard it. Um, if you remember it, um, I'll ask you about break, but the, it's incredible. So you guys don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with Greg Doyle. I'm Joe Roop. This is Spaced Out Saturday. Stick around right after these words. From the Mile High State of Colorado, sharing our signal around the world, I invite you to Spaced Out Sundays. Hi, I'm Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm closing out the week by taking you on a paranormal journey to the world of the weird. Ghosts, aliens, psychic phenomena, I will hit it all in your questions too. So let us highlight the paranormal for you. So come join me for Spaced Out Sundays starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. The Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Coming September 28th to the 30th, it's our first annual Caribou Paracon, put on by Spaced Out Radio and the Canadian Society of Questers. Three days of paranormal, supernatural, and spiritual knowledge in the beautiful 108 Mile Ranch, British Columbia. Tickets are $150 Canadian for the event, being held at the Spruce Hills Resort and Spa. Come watch our featured speaker, Grant Cameron, along with Lorian Fenton, David Weatherly, Ross Allison, and more. The Caribou Paracon, celebrating everything paranormal. 
Got ready for bed on Saturday night? Right after Spaced Out Saturdays, hop on over to S4 with Corey Ruiz and me, Eric Cooper from Forest Moon Paranormal. With S4, there are no limits to what we try and uncover. From government conspiracies to helping clean up the paranormal, no topic is safe on S4. We get to the heart of the matter, of the subjects you want to learn more about. So tune in on S4 starting at midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern, only on spacedoutradio.com. This is Eric Markham, news editor for the Spaced Out Radio's The Encounter Online. We have put together a great team of writers and journalists from all over the world to bring you top quality paranormal stories. From alien encounters to the latest conspiracies, you won't find any of that fake news here. True stories and top-notch reporting as we look to bring these experiences to the mainstream. The Encounter online, only at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and I want you to come on a nightly journey. Starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, every Monday through Friday, you can come hang out with me and the other space travelers. We have it all from Carl the Alien bouncing on by to those misfit gnomes causing havoc. It's three hours of fun and entertainment on those topics the mainstream really doesn't want to touch. Come get all paranormal with us at spacedoutradio.com, and together, my friends, along with our resident guitar god, Bumblefoot, we own the night. Do you want to know the truth? Do UFOs exist? Are aliens real? Are the governments hiding the biggest secret in history? We're UFO seekers, and we're on a hunt for the truth. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow along with us as we journey across the United States, visiting UFO hotspots and alien hotspots, trying to document the UFO phenomenon. Catch us on Spaced Out Radio every third Monday of the month as we discuss Area 51, UFOs, and more. And also, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio, or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. The opinions expressed by tonight's guest do not represent the opinions or position of Spaced Out Radio, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with SOR Media. Listener discretion is advised. Want more information about our programming? Check out spacedoutradio.com. You can follow our host, Joe Rube, on Twitter at Lighting the Void. Call in to tonight's show at 501-777-5631. Now, entering the radio ring from Arkansas, Spaced Out Saturday host, Joe Roop. Welcome back to Spaced Out Saturday. I'm your host, Joe Roop. Thank you, Bob. Uh, you guys, uh, we're working on Bob's GoFundMe page, so for all of you guys that want to donate to help out Bob, please do so. I think uh, everybody's kind of working together to get that going. 
Um, also, don't forget, again, after the show, uh, stick around. S4 will be on live on the Fringe FM and on Spreaker on Spaced Out Radio. So the live broadcast continues, uh, as always. We're here with Greg Doyle, author, coach, astral traveler. And it's been an amazing conversation, Greg. And, you know, before we go down the road of questions, because I, I am going to open the phones up if you want to call in. I'm going to get to you guys' questions that you all have been asking but I do want you to tell this amazing, because you were talking earlier how the astral realm integrates into physical life, maybe prophetically, synchronistically. And the the wolf story I heard you tell on the Grimerica podcast, uh, if you don't mind retelling that, you said you saw it on a shirt or something. I don't want to say the story for you. Yeah, yeah, no, that that was amazing. And I think, um, you know, I talked about earlier what triggered it. And, and I'd been to this craniosacral woman and... Um, who had done some energy work on me because she talked about blocks and, and I was intrigued, you know, cause I'd, I'd, um, she'd fixed my shoulder. So I went along one week. This is about the fourth week or something. And, um, she said, okay, Greg, uh, you've got issues storing aggression, you know, and as a little kid, I'd been, um, had a fair bit of physical abuse. So probably I'd repressed uh, certain things, whatever. But anyway, so she, she I'll never forget this. She put her fingers into her mouth into my gums like her, her fingers were like you know on my gums mm. and i thought this is interesting i thought have you have you washed your hands um uh, but um and i remember i kind of she said well you you, you haven't yeah you, you you you're you're letting uh, you're letting it go you're not um you're not uh, you're not actually uh, expressing it which you know it, it sounds logical on a, on that kind of level and then uh, but i went home that night and um, my gums were burning. I remember it was uh, my whole uh, jaw. I felt like it was, um, you know, like there was a little earthquake going on. It was shifting the plates, and 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 I, um, I can't fall asleep. I'm, my gums are absolutely burning. And I, and um, uh, next morning I wake up, and there is a black wolf in front of me. Now it's the head of a black wolf. It's a translucent black wolf, and it has green eyes, and it's growling, and um, it stays there for. Uh, two days, two nights. And um, so I'm trying to live my normal life. This is before my first astral experience, not long before. And there's a, I'm looking through the wolf, like it would go with me wherever I look, it, there it is in front of me. So it was, it was just a translucent, like a, you know, a 3D translucent, uh, like a, um, what do you call, hologram, hologram. Anyway, um, at that particular time, it's interesting, I didn't even see that it was a, <laughs> I didn't look at the parallels of what was going on. You know, at the time I just thought, what is it? What is happening? And it, and my flatmate at the time, um, we had a row over. You know, he had a um, uh, the power bill was very high because he had a, a, a an indoor garden. We were living up in the snow at a thousand meters high, whatever. And he had this hydroponic thing happening. So I said, look, I'm not going to. Anyway, I found I. I um, I had a really good argument. This is after a couple of days. I found I had a, an argument where I could express myself without kind of um, losing the thread or uh, sort of clamming up. And anyway, I was doing this while the wolf was in front of me growling. I'd finished my argument, which seemed a good cognitive argument, you know, and then the wolf licked me in the face and went into the corner. And I thought, that's interesting. The wolf was on my side. And then that was kind of the end of the wolf. Um, and this had been with been my constant compar- yeah, traveler, you know, for like the growling in my face the whole time. Once again, how the astral works. Uh, not a week later, I'm in town in, in Vienna, and um, at the time I was a musician, but I was also teaching um, part time, like um, you know, uh, English for uh, for um, uh, foreign, um, you know, those Austrians who I was teaching them how to speak English. Anyway, um, this woman walks in and she has exactly the same wolf on a t-shirt, and I and my whole body goes into you know some kind of uh, shock, you know, uh, well, in a good way. But the whole energy system of the body, I got used to that feeling. You know, when you get that kind of feeling run through you, but it's like really amped up to the max. And I said to the woman, I said, "Wow," I said, "I've seen that that exact wolf. I felt I could." She was on her own before other people came in, and I said, "What do you do?" And she said, "I'm a Reiki master." I thought, what's Reiki? And then she put me on, and then I became a Reiki master, which was really interesting. Well, pretty, pretty obtuse way to, like, what you put a wolf there after someone had issues with aggression after seeing this woman, then the, the wolf, and then you have the argument, then a person comes with the same wolf as a Reiki. I mean, that's something you can't think out. So, a little bit like the beings I met in the astral talk to me, they talk on such levels that 
that the human logical mind couldn't keep up with. We, we have a linear kind of mind, <laughs> whereas um, the astral, the way it does things, that little tweak in the back of my head, it, it, it does things that, it, that we can't see the, the, the rhyme or reason. And this song, Wolf was a classic example. And I, and I had, I've researched that Wolf years later. For, for a couple of years, I would, I would look for that Wolf online. I could never find that picture of that Wolf again because I'd love to find that T-shirt because somebody, somebody uh, designed that particular Wolf on the T-shirt and it was exactly the Wolf I saw, you know. Wow. That had to, that was, I bet that made the hair stand up on the back of your neck when you saw it, didn't it? It did. It, it was kind of like, yeah, it did. Exactly. It did that. I knew there's something important here. I just knew there was something that was relevant to my life. Um, why the wolf? Why only, you know, uh, a week later after having that wolf? And so for me to go into energy healing was um, through that, um, which is a pretty weird thing to go, but it, it was kind of in line with, um, yeah, it was kind of, and then all the astral experiences started. And then, then I remember seeing, because I knew the woman after that, I should have asked her where she got the T-shirt from, but it was kind of after the astral experiences then started, which was not soon after the wolf, then I actually decided to follow up. And actually um, I felt to go into some kind of energy healing because there was this weird stuff going on, seemed to be congruent with that, you know. So real weird, weird stuff, yeah. So John T. is asking at hashtag spaced out radio, are all dreams out of body experiences that occur in the astral plane? Well, I, to, to to my feeling, not um, an astral experience. Once again, it, it's a question of your mind. It's a question of how lucid your mind is. So, really, you're the same person, the person who is here now talking, or whatever, or the person who's dreaming, or the person who's astral. It's a question of how your mind is. Now, the astral mind is extremely focused. Um, it's sense, it's like the unified sense, it's like the five senses are an amped up hypersense, one big sense, like you have 360 degree awareness, all this kind of stuff. In a dream, when I've analyzed the dream state, it's not the case. But I would say they are fingers on the same hand. I think you can get from one to the other. So they're both what I would call in kind of illogical mediums, so they can connect easier. The human medium or the, the mortal medium is what we call a logical medium. So it's it's easier for insanity to kind of grasp us here. And so we have to, everything is logical, we, 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 which, which in brackets, insane. Um, we don't, we can be programmed very easily. We don't, the, the truth is very hard to grasp here. Um, whereas in those other realms, uh, the astral realm, you generally have a feeling of physical movement to it. Um, and there's a feeling of hyper lucidity, whereas in the dream realm, not the case, but you can go from one to the other. You can go from a dream into a into an astral. Gotcha. Um, also, are, are and he's also asking: Are out of body experiences are they guided experiences, or are they astral travel? What he's saying: Astral travel or out of body experiences are guided experiences or both? I don't know if I understand that question really. Yeah, no, I, I actually know what he means. Well, first of all, it's interesting because the out-of-body experience is really when you go kind of astral in this realm. That's what, Like the out-of-body experience is when you see your own body, when you kind of see people around you. And I think that's what people – and the astral experience is when you go into other realms entirely. Um, what I found is they are guided. Um, occasionally, like early on um, when I was – you know, a lot of the time I was taken out, but then I thought, well, I want to have some control here. That's why I looked into how I could do it myself. So I kind of reverse engineered the feelings to get out. Um, and I found that, um, you know, often I'd fall into the, in the beginnings, I'd sort of fall into the, the corner of the room or I get out of bed or roll out of bed and I didn't know if it was my physical body or my astral body. Um, and so that happened a lot. And um, were they guided or not? I think on many levels they are. If you look for guidance, you'll generally see it. Uh, I would say it's a guided experience. I would say that I think you can do both. I think you can get out, but generally I think we th there is an etiquette out there and that there are um, certain beings looking over the whole thing. That's what I found. If you look around, you'll see them. Now, what people perceive as, as shadow beings, for instance, are often a little bit like what I perceived as evil early on. It's, th it's the perceptions of the person. It's what you're carrying into that state. So if you can go into uh, the dream state going to your sleeping state, going to the unconscious state, um, carrying less and less fear, then these shadow people start to change and we perceive it as a shadow, but then that shadow can lift and you can see their actual guides that are actually there to help you. So often, uh, it's funny, uh, through a lens of a certain thing, it's, like, it's a little bit like um, 
you know, those murder mystery shows when you have all the different characters, uh, their story and who, who, you know, who done it kind of thing, that classic. There's all different versions of the same thing. And um, the human um, is generally programmed to believe that something uh, out of the ordinary like that is somehow uh, sinister. And, um, you know, so I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of ranting once again, but uh, <laughs> that's cool though. <laughs> I, that's totally fine. Uh, most of the time when we talk that. about this subject, there's so much there because not only are you talking about it experiences that you've had, you're also talking about, you know, how you're perceiving all of this, you know, and that's a lot. There's a lot to go over in that. You know, it, and I'm so glad you mentioned that because what I feel every night when I go to sleep, and this is this is this is really good you brought that up because this notion I talked about about being invisible or being a, kind of a, just a vessel for the cosmos, I really mean that. I mean that each night when I go to sleep, I try to be as empty as I can. I want to be, um, I want to uninfluence the situation as much as I can, because you start to trust. You start to realize, you know, it's like if you go to sleep, for instance. The best way to go astral is, is lying on your back in a symmetrical position, okay? If you if you put your arms across your chest, you won't go. Well, I found I never go. So if I don't want to go, I put my arms across my chest. And you think of um, the mummies, Egyptian mummies they used to put there for protection. You think of the – that makes a cross in itself. So um, – the notion, uh, even the, the very physical of, thing of having your arms by so being in an open, um, receptive, uh, it's a trusting state of being. So, but you want to get to that state where you feel you can let go. And like I see at night so many bizarre things. Not long ago, I'm lying there at night, I'm in bed, and I thought I thought oh, I'm, I'm thinking, how will I get to sleep? And I thought I thought I was still awake actually, but I think I must have gone astral. Then I look to the side, and hovering over my wife is this. Um, uh, is an entity. It's a female entity, just a, just a woman. But I feel she's up to nothing particularly good. And then she sees me, see her, and she's just out the wind. She's out the um, wall, quick smart. And then I noticed in the astral. I noticed because my wife wake up, and then I wake up, and I realize I was astral. All that I said to my wife, "What was happening to you then?" She said, "Oh, I was having a nightmare." And I said, well, "What was the nightmare about?" It was about nothing to do with her. But I know that she was having some. She was something to do with it. She was somehow. And once again, out of context, it sounds sinister. But if we're carrying fear with us uh, in our body, when I'm in our body, I mean not just our physical body, in, around us. If we carry fear and if we allow ourselves to 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 to, to be be um, like to, to to gather purchase, if you like, of the, the 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 illusion that is signaling out fear the whole time, then there will be entities. There are entities that come. I've even had um, early on. I remember having. Um, um, what do you call those entities that sort of drain men of their sexual energy? Like that was fascinating, and that I saw that I like. And as soon as I see them, they go. And 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 a lot of men have that; they don't realize they're having that. But there's a lot of um, they call them succubi. Um, Succubus. Yeah, they, I know what you're talking yeah, they, about. They exist, and yeah, and they for do. Me, for me, because I was a rather naive kind of guy, I continue to be a na- naive guy, I guess, but. I, I woke up to that after experiencing it. Like, had I had I researched that first, it probably would have freaked me out. But then I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in science fiction. So therefore, the <laughs> alien did freak me out. Had I had I watched all the alien movies, then would have freaked me out. Um, you know. So 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 each day I become as empty as I can because I'm preparing for the mini death of of, of night. So yeah. the mini death is when you you want to be as empty and as deprogrammed as possible. You know, another thing, too, I think that I'll add there to Eric's question about how to get out of body is like I was telling you during the break that you kind of reminded me that when that stuff was happening, I was actually doing different types of practices during the day. Like you talk about preparation. The reason why it don't happen nowadays, I think, is because I'm so busy and tired and I just fall out. But back then I was doing meditative practices, focus practices, all kinds of different things, and I think it really triggered that stuff. Look, absolutely, Joe, I, and I've I've also done that too. When I get into like I'm just sort of um, uh, teaching others or, or doing courses or, or, or Reiki, or whatever. Um, I'm not, even though I'm in very focused situations and, and taking meditations, but I'm not I'm not doing it for me, and I find that. I have fewer and fewer conscious situations. And people say, oh, Greg, thanks for taking me out of body. And I say, I don't remember doing that. I'm kind of feeling left out. And then I've got to get back to me. Uh, I've got to think, okay, well, my own practice, my own um, 
you know, I wanted, you know, sure, it can just happen spontaneously, but, but I, I find that um, it's a little bit like, um, you know, having dog treats for a dog. You know, you, you, you teach it to do something, and then after a while, you, you know, you hold the treats back because you want the dog just to, to think about doing that without the treat all the time. So I find it's almost like a level thing. It's like what I remember once reading somewhere a really good line about this whole astral thing and it said um what got you out of the body the first time won't be the thing that gets you out this time so it's it's like circling uh the beast if you like it's like finding every way and so um in my exercises i do with myself and other people i look at all different ways like focusing on the crown chakra and i went i once had a guide tell me in the astral you know focus on these tones above your head when you're when you're at, at late at night and you can do that you can hear all these um kind of um harmonic sequence above your head and you focus on the highest notes and that can get very loud and it can get you out of body and i remember this a lot of the stuff i've learned has been through through what you call invisible people you know that's that's why i've deliberately stayed away from from um, um, other stuff about this so like there are um um you, you've got a and, and see it as a game like i know myself it doesn't matter how many courses i'm taking or or individual sessions, or or, or if I'm because I'm writing another book and all this stuff, I I need to go and and do my own stuff um, as well, you know. So you've got to, and even just a little bit of inkling, like just the other yesterday, I just thought, okay, okay, do, I did it. Do you journal, though, I'm, Greg? I, I, I didn't um, mean to cut you off, but I wanted no, to ask that before well, I forgot. No, I just don't forget them. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool, you know. They're just too profound. I think I think the journaling has has kind of helped me, but writing all that stuff down each night it just it's really hard. So I've I've started to use a voice journal. Another question that's come here. Um, this one's actually through e- my email at contact at lightingthevoid dot com is uh, the dream state and the out of body experience state. You you're saying that you can get from I think I'm trying to read this right. You're saying you can get from a dream to a lucid state. But how do you get from a dream to an out of body state? See, I wonder if this is all just semantics. If it's all just levels of the same thing, I think sometimes. Well, no, that's actually a really good question. Um, well, in the it's changed for me. Um, in the beginning, uh, I found I was just uh, so in the dream state. I'd scan. I found I was uh, just moved to scan around. So I remember one classic example. I'm in this dream. And then I noticed it was when you really look at the dream state. Often it's 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 quite good. It's quite um, you know the textures are quite real. And the other day was one that was very real actually. But um, you look around it and you look for something, an object, generally an object or a person or an animal, some object of some kind that is very very lucid. And I remember in this one particular dream, I'm looking around. There was a painting on the wall that had very vivid colours. Now I didn't know to do this, but I just did this. And I remember I looked at the picture and then I focused on it and I found myself. Uh, once the astral movement, I, I, I went through the picture. So the picture was a vortex. And I was taken through the picture. And then I found myself in a real room. And I, and I remember I was barking Chinese at people. And this is when I was going through all this past life stuff. And I'm looking at my hands. And I've got these long fingernails. And and I realized that I'm the guy barking this thing. It's like um, a dormitory for, for monks. And um, and I'm Chinese. And, um, and it was absolutely amazing. I'm in this body. Um, kind of witnessing what this body is doing, but having no idea what it's doing. You know, you know, I mean, not having the control, but just sort of being there. But very high, once again, a hyper hyper real state. Um, having gone through this kind of vortex, that, that, that there's something in. So you look in the dream, you look for what I, what I call a messenger. So the whole system, I feel, is rigged in our favor. So even the dream state. So our higher selves want us to wake up just as our mortal selves actually subconsciously want our dream self to wake up. So it's this whole lucidity coming into like a chain reaction, if you like. So if you wake up in the dream state, um, look, forget the drama, that's my advice, and look, scan around and look for something that, that feels very real, that, that is out of place real. Often there'll be someone looking at you, and this is what I mean by how one interprets it. People might wake up, oh, I had a scary dream, why? Because there was a guy looking at me, you know? No, now, yeah. really, that's you know, but that's... Really, yeah, yeah, that's right. But, you know, I bring it on like uh, I bring it on. Uh, it's something like that. When something weird happens, I think, yeah, baby, let's go. You know, let, let's go. 
It's, 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 it's out of the normal. That's what you're looking for. Now, what I found, though, now I'm able to be in a dream state. Like, for instance, I had a dream a couple of months back where I was running. You know when your dreams, when you run, you can't run and you're getting pulled back? Oh, yeah. And I, and I knew I was dreaming. I thought, hang on. I turned around and I said, stop it. And there's this force behind me that just stopped, the force that was stopping me from running. Interesting, huh? But it was a dream state. And then I thought, okay, and I want to visit someone. Um, in the astral, I wanted to go and visit them. So then I thought, oh, that's right, I wanted to do that. And then I felt this swirl of energy all around me. So the vortex, the whole dream became the vortex. So, and I found other people are having the same experience. So um, that's two ways of doing it. You can just go directly, you just think you want to, ha- so have a, carry an astral intention with you. Like even now I have an astral intention. There's someone I want to go and do, and, and uh, I want to do something, I want to experiment, right? So I, I always have um, a trip planned. So that when I am out of body, I'm ready for it. Um, and so, or if I'm in a, a lucid dream, I'm ready for it. Gotcha. So, you know, and, and I sort of feel I put it like on the back burner, like in the back of my aura, I've got this experience just there. It's like, but really, I'm sort of putting it into my astral body. My astral body is bigger, so I, I'm, I'm, kind of constantly, um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just. With the, with this, this this program or, or this this intention, it's always running to, in the back of your mind, so you know what to yep. do when it happens, right? Yep, yep. Gotcha. That's, that's, you know, you know, yeah. I read a book by Samuel Onvior, which is kind of a Gnostic book, but he has a book called Dream Yoga, and he would make you do these ridiculous practices, and I found that they worked because the one time I got to fly, I'd do it. He he literally would say, "Walk out your front door in the daytime and jump up and down and try to fly." And I'm yeah. thinking, what do you mean try to fly? I can't fly in the physical realm. He he would say, literally try to fly. Do this for a few weeks. And, I, you know, I'm thinking my neighbors, they get, uh, my neighbors are way far away. But when they're looking at me, I was doing this. And I'm just thinking, what in the <laughs> hell is he doing? Is he trying to fly? What is he doing? You know, but in a in a few weeks, it worked. Cause it, Love it. I went out to the same spot in my yard, and this was kind of the same event, and looked up. And I said, I'm going to grab that tree limb right there. And it, I just kind of, I can't explain how to fly really, but I knew how to do it. And it just kind of pulled me to where I was going, almost like a zip line. Yeah. And Isn't I was like, brilliant? yeah, dude. And yeah. I was like, yep, I'm out. I'm, I'm out. I'm out. But then <laughs> when I say, look, I want to go somewhere. I want to fly to the moon or something like that. Then I keep, I keep hitting these realms of just static and blackness where it won't let me do it. I don't understand it because what, 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 and you're spot on about the jumping up and down. I've done that a lot and I, and I just instinctively used to do it. So because often in the dream, yeah, I'll jump up and down, I'll stop lying. So you, 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 you program it into your, your daily activity. So this only by every day you're actually programming for the night because it's the night and those illogical states yeah. you can go. I think what's happening. So what, what, what you can do is, um, you can be flying in a dream state. Like even often in dreams, I've told groups, people look, this isn't, this is this is just a dream, and they go, "What do you mean, Greg?" And I go, "Look at this, I'm flying around, showing them, you know." But it's still not a. <laughs> right. Oh, it's great! They did one not long ago. A whole group of people. I the said, people in the your way, dream guys, don't know what you're talking about. That's funny. No, yeah, they, they go, are oh, like but that. But then they saw me. Yeah, they saw me flying. They go, "Oh, heck, you're right." <laughs> 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 but you know the zip line thing. Um, so you want to get out of the dream state. So if you find yourself flying around the dream state, you want to go astral. So your intention, um, I, I guess is to to go astral so yeah what i wanted I to go do, out somewhere past my yard i still haven't okay. left my yard yeah okay so so you want to i reckon what you want to do is um have a target in mind and you want to so when you when you're when you're when you're out there think of the target uh, inside your 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 dream mind or your astral mind think of the target and and you'll just go there so uh you'll just fly there so um, when, when you can, that barrier there, yeah, I mean. There's something there, there I'm telling you. It's got to be something. It just well, feels yeah, like a barrier. It really does. Okay. You, you want to, you want, yeah, you want to just clear that barrier. You want to say it, gone. You know, I mean, look, a little bit like, as I said, it's a, it's a sticky reality. I mean, I'll, I'll often feel it in myself when I come back from somewhere and I go, hang on, there's a, there's a level of, um, there's something there that's not me, you know, and I will, I will say from the, from the, um, God being within me, I command any energy that is not in line with my high purpose to leave me now. And I'll feel this thing wriggle out of me, you know? Um, 
so even with space, you know, as in as in areas around you, you know, you, you can um, clear anything that is is blocking your path. I mean, uh, but then again, I've been in the astral where I've been also like that. I've been going along passageways and I haven't been able to get past things. You know, things things can happen like that. Um, who know, who knows in the end um, what what that is all about? But I think if you imagine your end point, like um, in in the case if you feel there's a block in the yard, like you want to kind of go into hyperspace if you like. So you want to just think of something that is outside. So so don't go through those linear realms if you like. Just think of something of what it can be to do with the angle of departure. I find a 45 degree, I know it sounds pretty weird, but I find a 45 degree angle of departure is a very good one for getting through any substances or any 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 um, uh, um, yeah. invisible blockages, 45 degree angle. That's funny because, I, you know, in the Void Walkers, I have a subscription service, it's called the Void Walkers, where I do these side episodes for the subscribers on the website, and I'm reading the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, and I haven't gotten to that tablet yet, but uh, Thoth or Thoth or Toth, however you want to look at it, he talks about, like, the key is up and to the right. Well, if you look at up and to the right, you know, if you draw a line, that's a 45 degree angle. But then he also says move in circles and not in angles. So I don't, I'm trying to figure it out too. But another thing that, that happened to me, Greg, and I don't know if you, everybody's heard me say it a million times, but I had a, you know, uh, a being in a state of what's called a false awakening where you just keep waking up, but you're not really waking up. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And the being, yeah, and this thing is like in my face, like I'm talking about inches from my face just looking at me, enough to freak me out just to jerk my head to the right. I couldn't jerk my head far enough to the right. And that's when the whole Jesus stuff started coming out, you know. I wonder what those things are. Everybody's like, well, this could have been a guide. No guide would freak you out like that, I don't think. No, I agree. I don't think they should. Look, I I think, um, um, look, I, I know... What I find, though, is if I find more and more, well, early on, I, I used to have some weird, weird things like that. And um, I find if I just, just through kind of being aware of them or them acknowledging me, acknowledging them, um, they dissipated. But um, there, there are, um, look, there, there are certain vibrations out there that, that are kind of, you know, blocking kind of vibrations. So, Whatever one can do, as I said, it's a very playful realm. This one, it's a very sticky, playful. A lot of things coming um, are able to to take part here, um, and constantly cool. Look, I remember once, very early on, having this this dark entity move in uh, to the room, and uh, I uh, was scared the hell out of me. I tell you, and uh, I um, remember just thinking, okay, be very, be very clear, and I find. I guess it's it's part of my habit now. Like I'm, you know, like I breathe the universe through my chakras every day. Um, they're very real uh, because I was shown them in the astral. Um, I mean, so I guess I'm constantly cleansing things on a certain level as well. Like I can't drink coffee, but it wasn't a choice. Early on, coffee started getting. I used to drink a lot of coffee, and then my energy body started going absolutely crazy, like shaking, like any, like like rattling. And I thought, what's wrong with me? And you're not on so, coffee you know, right then, now. I can't do it. Oh, I can't wow. do black tea. I can't. I can't. Mind you, it's only two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, it's only right. four thirty in the afternoon. <laughs> so, but but what I found is whether it sort of went hand in hand. I think with this awakening was not through any sense of being a do-gooder, but I just found like you know I I, I will choose organic food when I can because uh, it tastes better, <laughs> and I feel the earth is better off for it. And I remember once being out in the astral and, and seeing these bands of fear, uh, not fear, but pain around the earth. I remember really feeling this. It's mm. very interesting to see the earth um, in, in the astral. And um, it, it was a real feeling of uh, the earth as an entity and as a being. And I had a different, and I, I found that, um, you know, like uh, if I lift a plastic bag, you know, uh, off the ground and, and get rid of it, it's not not to be a good person. Uh, it, it's it's because I wouldn't want a bag around my head. So, and I find more and more. Um, I see what you're saying. It's not a moral yeah, thing. It's you're looking at things no, from cause and effect. 
Yes, that's right. And I think morality has been skewed so much. This notion of morality has been skewed so much. You know, the good, once again, the good suffering person for the greater good, which we don't know what we're talking about. So that that concept of the greater good being something, is it the banks? Is it mortgages? Or what's the greater good? So it's sort of like um, this notion of being very authentic with ha- how you feel. And I find, um, I guess, on many levels, uh, it is to do with getting rid of any uh, frequencies in your field that aren't serving you anymore. Um, well, why don't you and, come down here and pick me up and pull me out of my yard? Can you do that? <laughs> Look, I'll put the request out there, Joe. I'll put it out there. You'll be uh, back on your gonna... blog, on your website. But, uh, look, I've seen Joe's studio in his house. It's not a pretty sight. It really is <laughs> Arkansas. Right. He's got a washing machine out in his front yard. Some rough stuff out <laughs> there. True. So you should. So you should. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I got you know, him. And, and, but there can also be, you know, uh, there can be energies that are there um, in the land. There can be frequencies that are there from catastrophes in the past. Um, so I see anything as good, Joe. Like I, I got this chair, as I said, in this in this room I've got. And, and when I was setting up a vortex, because I want the chair, because I take people through meditations there. And I, um, so I set up like a vortex. I said, okay, you know, I really, I imagine a vortex like, you know, like a, a wormhole and, and as so, so what I do is I imagine this as I'm going into a meditative state. So I sort of feel into it. And what I want to do is I want to lose my logical mind. I want to drift into the illogical realms with this notion of the vortex, right? So that's the whole, you know, when you take a mantra through or any intention, you sort of hold it and for as long as you can. And so uh, you want you want sleep not to take you over so quickly. So that's a great technique people can use, actually. You sort of you actually, uh, your your eyes, you actually look up toward your third eye within your, you know, with your closed eyes, and that stops you from falling asleep and carrying intention, or in this case, it was a vortex. And then I kind of became slightly unconscious, but still lucid. Then I heard this smash of glass above my chair, and this woman scream, and I thought, yeah, baby, let's go. Now, someone <laughs> could say, someone could say, that's scary, but that's just an astral noise. Now, through the um, lens of someone who You're slightly is, crazy, aren't you, Greg? To some people, I bet to some people yeah. you you yeah. are. I I think you're right, and and <laughs> no, I'm just you're, playing. You're normal. No, you but, figured it out though. You figured not to react and become <laughs> astonished because you're in the astral. Yeah. Anything's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And through through the because I was I was very uh, at the time I was still quite with it, you know. So I was still quite um, um, logical. So the logical mind think that's scary, you know. So so it's. It's a question of um, little by little kind of just diffusing this state we've all been to be in, this state of like, like there can even be a TV show uh, that is a beautiful, maybe it's an Attenborough show of nature, but you can be feeling anxious when you watch it. Now, I looked into this. This is one bit of research I did do. And I found that there was a patent. Um, when TV first came out, there was a patent um, that was – because it was supposed to be a, a commercial, uh, the whole idea of TV was to, to sell things. Um, so um, think of the moon landing. <laughs> no, but um, so, so if they, they put a frequency in there that makes you feel slightly anxious because that having a slight level of anxiety, you're more likely to respond to the ads. So you gotcha. can be watching. Yeah, and, and all TV stations ha- have to have that. So that's why watching maybe something on another, often like at the cinema, you don't have that. Um, so even though the show may appear wonderful, look into how your cells are feeling. How are you tense? <laughs> are you are you are you clamping? Are you so? And turn it off. <laughs> I don't care what's coming over the program. If I'm feeling at all anxious for whatever reason, I'll turn it off. So I really urge people to do that, and and really. And really as I said, to feel as empty as you can, because this whole astral, this whole astral experience is is a natural native one. It's not an add-on. The add-ons are the things that are blocking it. So the add-ons are the things that are blocking it. So all of these pro, all these um, like thoughts, these, maybe th- like you, you, you or maybe a thought where you're like, why am I thinking about this? I would never think about this. Why yeah, am I thinking about said- something like this? You know, it's like uh, the whole vaccine debate, and and I find this fascinating. I I, I know um, I knew I had a friend a, a while back who's very uh, middle of the road kind of person. Doesn't really ask me too much what I do, but you know, nice person, very demure on all things. And then I said, oh, do you vaccinate your children? 
And and she said, yes, I do. What? Do you, and she went in there, and all of a sudden, I noticed her eyes. She got very, very lucid and very, you know, she was able to really argue and this very aggress- aggressive. And then we moved on to the next subject. It passed again. So what I realized was that it wasn't her. This was that was that that was that frequency. That was that program. So this is the way this <laughs> reality keeps us in check, if you like. Now, you want to get to the point where we all deal, we do a bit of protection so that, you know, it doesn't hit you. But then after a while, you, you kind of, this is getting back to the invisibility idea. You want these frequencies not even to take purchase. They'll just go through. They won't see you. They just won't see you because you're not interested. You, you're energetically not interested in that program. So, so uh, more and more, I'm, and this is for another whole uh, radio show, but uh, I'm convinced we're some form of artificial intelligence, to be honest. That's to go on a real... Oh, well, yeah, that's the right deep hole there. there. <laughs> but let's not go there. But, but it I'm may be an organically is, programmed one, right? Like, it's just a technology we don't understand. Exactly. And and I think, you know, you can be you can see the world as sinister or you can see it as playful. And perhaps uh, perhaps I'm personally lucky because I've seen that, that, that there's, feeling, there's beautiful feelings out there, like the feelings of, Connection. I mean, how can anyone doubt being connected to the cosmos when it's what we are? <laughs> you know, um, how, how can we not be connected? So, so for me, it's this feeling of invisibility and feeling of emptiness, um, and I'm okay with that now because it, as, it's come at a cost. As I said, um, you know, certain short-term memories, even probably long-term memories, but in many ways that's irrelevant because. Um, even a memory has been proven to be a program in a sword. Each time you bring up the memory, you actually change it, apparently. So so what is that anyway? So I think that this emptiness is a beautiful thing. And I think that if we if we um, can can take that through the day and not and and look at what what are we reacting to? like what are the what's the stimuli that's that's pressing our buttons? Like what is that really all about? what what why is a button being pressed there? you know and and anyone awakening, as we know, we go through a lot of anger when we realize that the system is not supporting us and that, that you know, it's not doing, we could thrive so much more in the, in the physical sense, in the materialistic sense, that we could thrive, everyone could thrive. But but when, when you get over that and think, okay, um, just go into yourself and just sort of allow it to move through you. And then I, I'm more likely then to get into that astral state. So... And I feel that, that that kind of empty state is kind of calling in the guidance because the cramped state is saying I'm separate. Um, I don't believe in guidance or whatever. So guidance is real. So I think I urge anyone, you know, to want to go out to set up the intentions, do, do all the exercises you can, keep it playful, and do call in for guidance and aim at being empty. Aim at really look into what occupies your mind because what I'll do is, um, and this may help a few of the listeners, like I'll – you know, like I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I just never wanted to. My parents are chain smokers. Never, I never yeah, wanted to. That's a smoke. good thing, so, believe me. Yeah, and I know exactly the, the taste of that addiction. I was once at a bus, and I, th- I just thought, geez, I could have a cigarette right now. And I knew that's it so it well. That's how it starts. That's exactly how and it I, starts. Yeah, I know, and I knew it. I knew that the taste, the texture, and I knew it was the guy next to me. You know, I heard and, that you take that into the astral with you after reading Bob's books and all these different books that. And, and and listening to Manly P. Hall warn about addictions, he talks about their energies. Jason Quit warned about them, too, because it seems like your astral body or your lunar body, whatever you want to say, takes it yeah. with you. Imagine being in a realm where all you want is just one drag, right, and you can't have it, and nothing's going to do anything. That's torture. <laughs> That's hell. That's you want to talk you- about hell, there it is. But you can. I mean, you can have, look in the look. What I found, look, uh, look like for instance, like, like the, the sex thing is a big thing. The astral too. Right. That is a big yeah. thing. That's what, so, so you got to look at the programs that are going on here, like to to keep people in an addictive state is is very much part of the the control mechanism. But like for instance, once I was out there and thought, look, uh, you know, I don't want a chocolate ice cream, and I had the, the best chocolate ice cream, you know, and I didn't know the recipe. I had no idea of the recipe. And this is like what I was saying before. You, don't, you know, this this notion of uh, one's sense of material well-being not necessarily de- being dependent upon a logical source of income, if you like, you know, having that mindset. So I didn't, ha- I didn't have to know the recipe of the chocolate ice cream for it to be the best chocolate ice cream I want. So in the astral, you can have whatever experience you want. And I think what you're saying there is that's where the addiction thing comes in, is that a lot of people will go to that addictive default, right? A lot of people will go to that, ad- yeah. uh, that addictive default. So then that's what stops them from perhaps wanting to 
uh, experience something else. And that's a tricky one to get over. And, but I find that naturally, um, you know, it, it is a snowball. Um, you go astral, it, it affects your emotional body in this realm, and that affects the astral, affects this realm, affects the astral, and, and, and so forth. So I find what what people can also do is to, yeah, once again, look at what look at what is really triggering them. Like, what is the addiction actually nurturing? Where does it come from? Just to question it in a playful way, um, as I said, you know, uh, and then and then when I'm going to sleep at night, I'll often look. I'll just have a quick glance of what is on my mind, like not not positive, negative, just what is occupying me, and I'll just have a look at it for a few seconds and think, okay, and then it will generally dissipate. So I find awareness naturally dissipates. I don't have to try to psychoanalyze what it is, or it's just it's an energy that just with awareness dissipates. And I find right. that it's a little like the shadow entities. Once you're aware of them enough, they dissipate. A question um, and, from and, the oh, go ahead. Finish your thoughts. No, no, no. Sorry. Yes, go, go, go on, go on, go on. But a question yes. from the uh, Fringe FM chat. Uh, Fisher's in there listening to the Fringe FM relay in the chat room on the Fringe FM. He's asking, uh, is it possible to astral travel into places that you've visited in the past or past lives? Maybe what you remember from maybe like your DNA or something. Oh, absolutely. That's the best thing to do. Um, Absolutely, I think that I think the Akashic Records is all about that because our, our DNA is linked to everything. So it's like um, you know a homeopathic remedy almost, like we were in touch with everything. So I found um, I've gone into I, well, I just spontaneously went into what felt like past lives. Like when I realised I was in someone else's body, it was very real and all this kind of stuff, and also um, past events um, that you're associated with, even ones you're not associated with, you can have a look at. So it, totally, totally possible, and and. And not only that, um, the the intelligence of your cells is phenomenal. Like um, you don't have to kind of bludgeon them. Like if there's an event you want to, to visit and you have a pull toward, it knows what you're talking about. You don't have to like, you know, um, if there's an event you see in the news that you would like to go back and look at, you don't have to constantly bring up that that news article. You've seen it once. Your Your, your, your psyche knows it. Your mind knows it. Your body knows it. Um, and your cells, of course, uh, through extension node as well. So that is a great way to, to, to go into to early experiences is, is past life stuff and stuff you've been associated with for sure. Craig is asking in the Spreaker chat, do you find details and context uh, only hold you back? I guess maybe details or, I don't know, expectations maybe in as far as the astral mm -hmm. realm goes. It's an interesting question. You can get bogged down with certain things. I know early on I used to get bogged down with street signs. Um, I'd go to some really weird places and I'd be looking at the street signs and I'm trying to work out stuff. I found that um, you can get bogged down the details. I did often. Often I got bogged down the details. Um, uh, often, often. But that's part of the journey um, is to do that, I think. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, you you really can't remember one one great one great uh, example was I, I was blasting out from the earth, and I felt this massive fear, and I thought, what's going on? And and I and um, I you realize it wasn't my fear, I realized it was a band of fear, and then all of a sudden I saw all these um, UFOs and black helicopters. I thought, what's this? What what's oh, going nice. on here? And then I and then I and then I had this download, and um, the download was very interesting, and I heard these words say. Greg did not get bogged down in conspiracy. Now, for the next year, I was bogged down in conspiracy. I was bogged down in the details. And then the download was this kind of um, collusion, as I mentioned before, between certain beings and humans to 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 keep us uh, suppressed, which shocked me. And then, that, then, of course, that year I was, you know, I was doing all sorts of um, looking at all the conspiracy theories and realizing, forget the word theory, it's, it's just conspiracy, you know, so... <laughs> And this whole market's uh, bogged down with it. it. It's the biggest thing going right now as far as audiences go, just to be honest. Yeah, and that itself is is a major block. I'm with you. <laughs> because if you're going to want to prove something, if you're going, that's a holding on to something, it's, um, that's the detail, you see. You, you, you're then... What I found to be as empty as possible, you'd be shown the most amazing things. If you if you if you go astral, if you were just open and just think, let's go. So it does have to do with transcending, I guess, the fear of, you know, the loss of the bodily state. I mean, you, you, if it were your time to go, you'd go. I don't think that's going to 
you know, people say, oh, do people die when they go astral? Well, I can't say, can I? I think well, I mean, if you're great- in the astral realm, Greg, and when you yeah. get there, I'm, I don't think that the the Council for National Policy and the Rothschilds kind of enter your mind in, in those states, do they? No, they don't. And it, it's so true. Like you can go out, like you know, you want to go out proving stuff and all this. And then when you get out there, it's just so blissful. You just don't give two hoots about that. And it's like there's other things you want to see. Like there's well, one fantastic thing I, I saw above the earth was this um, kind of crystalline um uh, I don't know, it was like a wall. And it was this phenomenal intelligence. And I thought, what's this? And I'm drifting past it. I thought, whoa, I was a bit scared. It was big. This intelligence was way, way, way beyond even the karmic thing. Even be- nothing, did, nothing to do with us. <laughs> and it was kind of, um, I, did, I did feel, however, that there was some controlling aspect of it. So it was a very, very um, high intelligence on a material level. Um, and it showed itself in kind of like... Um, a crystalline grid thing, and I, I felt that was part of the um, uh, off-world intelligence. That, um, as I said, out of context, it sounds sinister, but it's not. It's just the. It's just the. Sounds it's like just you're worried about what you're about to say. Are you going to go back to the artificial intelligence thing? Because I'm intrigued well, no, by that. Yeah, there's stuff playing out here, and and, yeah. and and that's okay. It's just out of context. Things can you know people can get the heebie-jeebies, but you know I I have a belly laugh, and when when people, you know I I, I genuinely you know if I hear something that is, that is naturally constricting then allow yourself to release if you hear something about the latest tax laws allow yourself to release you know if you're hearing something you know just do the opposite and oh. um play with that play with that play with the opposite and yeah, don't be afraid to to go outside the box for sure right like oh, whatever absolutely. your program has been telling you like that and see and that's what thomas campbell told me he he said you know when you go in the astral realm you you, you have expectations right so you go in the astral realm and maybe you see some ugly pink unicorn and your mind tells you i don't want to mess with that right but he's saying well what if that pink unicorn is a portal why not go interact with it what's it going to hurt you know and that that, totally i totally get that and that's why if there's any feeling of of antagonism in the astral go go toward it or in a dream state go toward it and it's amazing what happens because there is not there's nothing against us (laughs) there's nothing against if you're prepared to step into that Here's a good question that we can kind of wrap up with. I mean, we could take this on forever and ever. So you guys need to follow Greg if you want to continue this journey with him. Because Greg is 100% legit, I promise you. From my experiences in the astral realm, I know he's the real thing. Uh, Tripp in in the Spreaker chat has asked, have you had any assistance from the elder aboriginals? Maybe people of your land or aborigines, maybe. Ah, that's a, that's a, a great question. I've actually, would you believe... Um, had an initiation in the astral with the American uh, Indians. Oh wow! Which which I had no interest <laughs> from originally. No, that's what, it was absolutely amazing. And I was um was as a lake. I remember I came out of this astral kind of fog and this beautiful lake and pine trees and mountains. I'm thinking, wow, and they're big, you know, big American pine trees, pine trees, and. And then all of a sudden I hear these drums, boom, 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 and then the lake's froze, and then there's people coming and go, whoa, I got a bit scared, and. They were they were uh, Native uh, Americans and um, they um, they were smiling and then all of a sudden all these me and all these naked astral people were on this frozen lake dancing and having a ritual it was incredible wow. nothing I would have thought of to have um, but from Aboriginal no um, no I haven't and that's um, look there's there's a lot of energies here a lot of um, you know as you know there's a, it goes back a long way and there's been a lot of um, a lot of energetic damage here as well so. It's an interesting country from that point of view, but not as yet, not not actual firsthand uh, astral experience with 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 um, elders. But it's something uh, I would like to. What do you say? And this is my question. My, I guess my last question before we talk about how to follow your work and stuff is, what do you say to people that are telling you? It seems I have this problem with, like when I, when I talk to people like you, man, I could talk forever because you're so open to everything because you've had this experience right but then i run into these guru type people that want to teach you everything and it's almost and i maybe it's a i don't know maybe it's like a a reaction from me it's like well i I think it's like when i'm hearing stuff where people are defining every little thing and they know everything to me i kind of want to walk away from that because i'm afraid i'll get trapped into their system or something and i don't know if that's good or bad 
I think it's a good thing, Joe. I I, I feel the same, and I feel that anyone um, who uh, who I've met here who who even a- approaches even what I say in that in that way in that guru way, I'm very very not of that persuasion. It's about the experience. It's not about not about me, and it's all about it's about people having their own experiences too. So anyone compartmentalizing everything is. Uh, it's it's if it's if, if it sounds like dogma, and it feels like dogma, then it is dogma. I think you know. Yeah, it's like this um, the four D, five D, six D, seven D thing, and I'm like, come it's on, it. you guys are really defining this stuff. I don't think we know much about it yet. We're just starting to explore this, you know. That's totally how I feel. I, that's why I don't define. Like I don't. I, I personally feel the same way. I just I just say it as I as I feel it and see it and, and have experienced it, but I don't. I'm I'm not in the yeah I I I'm I agree totally with what what you say there Joe. Maybe I'm, some I'm people are right though too. So that's a that's the thing I yeah. get caught in. But I think that you're you're actually gonna, you know, I, you're kind of newer on the scene, but you're starting to build a big following because people know that you're real. You know, they know that it's it's really happening to you, and they want to share that experience with you. So, I mean, how do people do that? I know you're still working on a lot of things right now, but. Um, how do people follow you on the web? Well, the, look, the best thing is to go to my website. So it's gregdoyleastral.com. And um, I've got a lot of stuff up there, like tips and techniques. There's even a few meditations that people can download. I've got um, – I generally do do courses and stuff, events here in Australia because I'm still early on. And uh, at some stage I want to go over to the States for sure. But um, I'm just sort of letting that happen. So – there's always things going on. You, um, you can subscribe on my website. You'll see a little pop up, and, and I send out newsletters occasionally. What you know, a uh, few astral tips, and um, even uh, the odd um, interview, radio interview, <laughs> and um, things like that. And um, so I'm working on an online astral course at the moment, um, so people can get into into it. And as you say, look, I just like sharing the stuff. That's how it yeah. started for me. I, mean, I love it. That's that was why I wrote my book. I just wanted to share it with 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 uh, with everyone and um because i think it's something that um that is actually a natural i don't think it's supernatural at all i think it's actually a natural process that we can wake up to that we are waking up to so it's um oh, right. i love sharing this well when i hear that word multi-dimensional i i actually think that's a good word for it i mean it's as far as we can define it though so i'm kind of contradicting myself on that one too you know no no but Toddy Joe, I think what whatever works because myself, I, when I'm meditating, I'll often affirm to myself, you know, I'll, I'll, the feeling of gratitude, not not in the sense of, you know, an external gratitude to something greater than you, a, a sense of, oh, this is great, um, to to experience multidimensionality. I'll often meditate upon that because I'll do everything I can to support that because I, it's such a beautiful state of being that even though I've experienced it many times, I, I will still. I still, I still yearn to feel into it. I love it. I love it. So I'll do everything I can in my powers to experience that more and more. Um, you know, and um, multi-dimension. Multi, the, the, that word, it's a great word, multi-dimensional. I think that's very much kind of encapsulates that experience without a doubt. Well, you're doing something right because I'm getting messages here that lots of people are going to re-listen to this show. So um there's something exciting about astral travel consciousness. I'm happy that this movement is happening and that it's not just something that we're just talking about because see, I know it's real now, you know, and we can really do these things and there's no telling where we're going to go from here. That I think that's the exciting part about it is almost like the not knowing where's this journey going to lead, you know? Yeah, totally, Joe. I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked to talk about this subject. And also, I think that you're right. I think we don't know where it's going. And I think that, you know, when we, when more and more of us wake up in the astral, it's, it's like, you know, you're, you're changing the pH of the whole thing. You know, all those little um, monsters, all those little myths that are programmed in that are scaring people, all these programs will start to dissipate. I tell you, um, that there's things afoot. There's things afoot. And um, it's, it's good. It's good news for us all. And um, I really, I really, I really mean that. It's like. Um, it's it's a wonderful thing when when that consciousness starts to to expand and to vibrate in a different way. And I know more and more people. Like one guy, when I wrote the book, a friend of mine, uh, he didn't know about these experiences mm-hmm. at the time. And he said, "Greg, he's a lawyer." And he said, "Greg, um, is this that all rubbish what you wrote?" And I said, "No, it's true." Huh. Anyway, he got the book, and then the next day, 
he started reading it. The next day he said, Greg, I've got to tell you something. I said, what? He said, I, I went out of body last night. Uh. And that was just, and, it, and that happened so often. I thought, really? And he said, yeah. He said, okay, I got you. He just, <laughs> and he stayed a friend. It's great. You know, he was, he, it was right. brilliant because he was very, you know, what do you call it? Right or left brain, whatever that is. Very, and it was just great when that happened. I thought, oh, that's just fantastic. That was early on. I just thought that's wonderful that just, yeah, just that happened discussion. to him, right? Well, yeah, th- yeah, thank yeah, you so much for coming on the show, thanks. Greg. We got to do this again, man. This was great. Thanks, Would love to, Joe. Thanks so much for having me. Hang on for just one second. I'm going to holler at you about something. One real, quick. and then uh, that was Greg Doyle, guys. Got to have him back on. You're asking for it, so we'll have him back on. I'm sure in the future. Thank you so much for listening to Spaced Out Saturday. I'm your host, Joe Roop. We will be here next weekend. There's no telling where the rabbit hole goes. And uh, if you're listening live on the Fringe FM or on Spaced Out Radio, make sure that you stick around for S4. We'll see you guys next Saturday night. And our steps are marching, growing distant from the sound.